How much can you do in two years of Stardew Valley? You can do a lot, like complete the community center, make friends with all the villagers, and attend all the festivals. Or what if you could achieve perfection? Here's how I did it in just 224 days, without resetting the day, meticulously perfecting the game. On day one, I grabbed my parsnips and started to clear my farm. I built a chest with 50 wood and headed to Pierre's. I bought two cauliflower seeds, one bean starter, and eight potato seeds, basically spending almost every penny I had on crops for the season. After planting my crops, I headed into town to meet some of the villagers. I called it a night and reached foraging level one, the first of many levels to come. Today started with me watering my crops and getting a letter from Willie to meet him at the beach. I quickly grabbed my fishing rod from him. And after some minor detours, I headed up to the mountain lake. I fished my life away until Sebastian- Sebastian! Sebastian! My leaks! That's when I decided I could marry Sebastian. I've never done it before. And so it was set. With the thoughts of my future husband in my mind, I passed out at the lake and hit level 3 fishing. I started the morning of day 3 bright and early. I'm gonna go off my stuff! Oh my gosh, dude. I took out my frustration at the river and ocean where I caught a handful of fish. I also got a diamond, 4 rubies, and a small magnet ring and treasure chests. I sold everything I caught and passed out at the ocean, hitting level 5 fishing. I chose the fisher profession to help with my early game profits. I woke up to the sound of my arch nemesis, the crow, eating my cauliflower. I accepted a cape carrot quest from the love of my life and dug through Alex's trash can for some cookies. Then it was time to get some upgrades. I bought a fiberglass rod, 40 potatoes, a cauliflower, and a large backpack for more inventory space. After watering a plant of my crops, I went to the mountains to fish. I caught my 100th fish and got the achievement Mother Catch. I sold all my fish and went to bed. Overnight, I hit level 6 fishing. The mines finally opened up. I checked my TV and saw it was a good humor day. Marnie greeted me at my doorstep with a cat. I named him Junior Bro, and from the moment that I laid my eyes on him, I knew that you're gonna have to find somebody else to give you water and attention. I got crops to tend to. Hey look, my parsnips are done. I watered the rest of my crops and headed into town, where Lewis told me I had to fix the entire community center. I read the mysterious scroll and headed to the mines. I got leather boots on floor 10, a wood club on floor 20, and on floor 24 I found the cave carrot for my husband. I found Sebastian at the saloon and fulfilled his request. I also gave Emily a topaz and bought a glazed yam for Lewis's birthday. After sleeping, I hit level 1 mining and level 1 farming. Good morning, Clint. Thanks for the furnace recipe. Please go away. I crafted a furnace and smelted five copper while watering my crops. I also crafted a scarecrow to protect myself from that evil crow. I was mailed a letter from the wizard to meet him at his tower. After... I don't even know what this is. The wizard told me how to speak Junimo, which means I could complete the spring foraging bundle. I upgraded my pickaxe at... Oh, it's you again. And did some fishing at the ocean, river, and floor 20 of the mines. I sold my fish and the spring seeds I got from finishing the spring foraging bundle. I woke up this morning with the urge to learn how to cook. Luckily, the queen of sauce was on and taught me how to make stir fry. I harvested my potatoes and checked the traveling cart for some goodies. She was selling a coconut, which I bought for Haley's birthday. Speaking of birthdays, happy birthday, Lewis. Here's a glazed yam that I totally didn't buy while you were at the saloon the other night. I bought more crops and fished at the ocean and the lake. After selling my fish and potatoes, I hit the sack and also hit level 7 fishing. Day 8 started when my mom sent me 500 gold. Thanks, mom. I harvested two parsnips and saved a gold quality one for Pam's birthday. I accepted a quest to slay slimes and grabbed the copper pickaxe from Clint's. After buying 20 salads and 15 coffees from Gus, I headed back to the mines. Floor 26 was an infested floor where I finished my slime slaying quest. I picked up a rice shoot from a grub and made my way down to floor 50. Barely making it to bed, I hit level 1 combat and level 3 mining. Today was a rainy day, which means I didn't have to water my parsnips. Good thing some of my parsnips were ready to harvest. I planted the rice shoots and made a chest for mining. It was time to fish. 15 hours and 14 catfish later, I sold my fish and headed to bed. I hit level 2 farming and level 8 fishing. Dimitri showed up at my door today. Where's your umbrella? Anyway, I'll take one fruit bat cave with a side of potatoes, please. I went back to the river for more catfish. Then I bought an iridium rod, a trap bobber, 100 bait, and 2 trout soup. You're the best, Willie. Time to test this new fishing rod out. I gave Vincent a daffodil for his birthday and went back to the river. Again. I sold my fish and potatoes and laid in bed. I also got farming level 3. Day 11 started with more watering. Then I grabbed a help wanted quest from Willie. He wanted one green algae. By Sam's house there happened to be a bubble spot, where I easily caught the green algae. I delivered it to Willie and went to fish at the mountain. I put my fish in the shipping bin and went to sleep, hitting level 9 fishing overnight. I read the mail and oh look, Robin lost her axe. Time for me to be the hero, but first my bean has priority. I also wanted to catch myself a wood skip today, but that didn't happen. Instead, I went on a shopping spree and bought a walleye, a sturgeon, and a sandfish from the traveling cart. Since I'm already in Cinder Sat Forest, I might as well grab Robin's axe. 
I went into town and treated myself to a deluxe backpack and 18 salads. I delivered her axe while she was walking by the community center. I donated both the walleye and the sandfish and then I was back to fishing at the lake. On my way home, I sold the spring onions I collected from Cinderset Forest, a handful of fish, and reached foraging level 2. Today is an important day. My tulips, parsnips, cauliflower, and kale are all done. I prepared spots for strawberries in advance and chopped some trees. Then I made my way to the egg festival. At the festival, I bought 41 strawberry seeds. I also met the remaining villagers. Of course, I dominated Abigail with my 10 eggs and won myself a nice straw hat. Then I was back to the grind of planting my strawberries in the middle of the night. On my way to donate the spring crops to the community center, I caught Linus digging through George's trash can. I told Linus that Evelyn does throw out too many cookies and went on my way. After I was rudely interrupted, I donated the cauliflower and green bean and completed the spring crops bundle. I used the 20 speed grow I got from finishing the bundle on my strawberries. I shipped the tulip and kale and headed to bed. It's Queen of the Sauce Sunday! Today's recipe was coleslaw. Lewis also taught me how to make spaghetti in the mail. Lewis, are you the queen of sauce? I harvested and shipped blue jazz and a green bean. I deforested the farm and went to Two Willow Lane. Here I gave Haley a birthday gift, a nice coconut that I harvested from the traveling cart. I bought 17 cauliflower seeds from Pierre and planted them on my farm. Since it was a good luck day, I decided to go to the mines. I picked up door scroll 2 on floor 53 and went fishing for an ice pip on floor 60. After reaching floor 65, I sprinted home making it under my covers at 1.40am. I also reached combat level 2. Day 15 started like most other days so far. Fishing. Since it was raining, I ate trout soup to increase my fishing level to 10 so I could catch the legend fish. Luckily, with the help of my trap bobber, I was able to reel this monster in pretty easily. I then accepted a help one quest from Abigail. She wanted a snack, a shiny diamond to be specific. I sold some of my fish at Willy's and grabbed some more trout soup. I ended my night fishing in the river before crashing in my bed. It was finally time to make some more storage. I needed a fishing chest to hold fish and a museum chest for any artifacts or minerals I found. I watered my crops, harvested my rice shoots, and hustled back to the mountains. I gave Linus a salmonberry to try to earn his trust and dove into the mines. The mines today were fantastic. I made it to floor 70 while filling my inventory with goodies. I also happened to find a diamond and an amethyst, which was perfect for the purple hair princess. On my way to Pierre's to find Abigail, I bumped into her and she gave me a hefty 2,250 gold for my findings. Then I was back to the mines with the intention of getting down as many floors as possible, which went in my favor as I made it all the way down to floor 90, receiving an ossified blade for my efforts. Then it was time to hit the hay. I hit level 4 mining and level 3 combat. Rain. The thing I love most. With you, I don't have to water my crops. Unfortunately, today was not one of those days and I was forced to water myself. I grabbed my furnace and a few items I needed to complete the boiler room and strolled into town. I stopped by the help wanted board to grab a cauliflower delivery for Clint. If only my arch nemesis, the crow, didn't ruin my cauliflower earlier. Curse you, crow! I placed my furnace at the top of the mines and smelted gold. The last thing I needed for the boiler room, an earth crystal, which I stole from a dugout on floor 23. Continuing on my quest downwards, I reached floor 100 and found my first star drop. The taste reminded me of... Leo? What in the world? Who did that? Disgusted from the taste of Leo, I headed back to floor 20 to mine more copper. With my pockets full of resources, I went back to the community center to finish the boiler room. I made my way into bed, unlocking the minecarts and reaching level 5 mining. I chose the minor profession. Oh, look at that! No rain! Again! So I watered my crops. I also grabbed a gold parsnip for Pam's birthday and a cauliflower for Clint's quest. I went to the mines to farm copper and iron. Then I rode my brand new minecarts down to the museum. I donated a few items before heading to the blacksmith. I gave Clint his cauliflower and wished Pam a happy birthday with a parsnip. I stopped by the Star Drop Saloon for some salads, coffees, and a beer for Shane's birthday. Back to the mines to farm copper and iron. I found a handful of artifacts, including Dwarf Scroll 3, a chewing stick, and an ancient seed. I fell asleep to the thoughts of my new best friend Pam and hit level 4 combat. On day 19, the love of my life showed up on my doorstep. Rain. Which meant it was time to fish again, but first I needed to check the mail. Pam sent me a cheese cauliflower recipe and Jody asked for a cauliflower for a dish she was making. Then I went straight to the river and hooked an iridium quality catfish for Willie's birthday. I caught a lot of fish but couldn't catch Leah's attention. After a long day at the river, I headed to bed. Overnight, the crop fairy magically grew all my cauliflower. Not useless! I leveled up to farming level 4 and fishing level 10. With my first max skill under my belt, I chose the angler profession. Thanks to the crop fairy, today was harvest day. I picked up all my cauliflower and my speed grow strawberries. I set aside two gold cauliflower, one for the Lua and one for Maru's birthday. Then I watered the rest of my crops. I also chopped some trees. I needed more wood to craft two more chests, one for fruit and one for vegetables. I handed Shane his birthday beer at Pierre's and bought some potatoes. Then I donated a few items to the museum. 
For donating my ancient seed, Gunther gave me an ancient fruit seed and the recipe. After that, I delivered some gifts around town. Of course, I didn't forget about you, Sebi. However, I forgot to plant my potatoes. I quickly tossed them in the dirt and hustled back to the mines. On floor 24, I found Dwarf Scroll 1, meaning I only had one left to find. Back on the farm, I shipped some fish I caught earlier in the week with my angler profession in full effect. I started day 21 by harvesting more strawberries and watering crops. I gifted the wizard a solar essence. On my way to the mines, I checked the help wanted board. I picked up a frozen tier delivery quest from the wizard. Guess he just missed me. After a minor detour, I dug my way to floor 110 where I found crystal shoes. I cracked open some Omni Geodes and gave Clint my pickaxe to upgrade. I donated a few items to the museum before heading to the lake. After some fishing, I took a quick 5 hour nap. My farming skill hit level 5 and I chose the tiller profession. I also hit level 6 mining. Man, I really need to invest in sprinklers. I delivered the wizard a frozen tier and a solar essence. I gave some bachelorettes a couple gifts and told Haley that she needs to do a weekly chore. I bought 3 fried calamari at the saloon for Pierre along with 2 beers for Shane. I buttered up Pierre with a fresh saloon purchase gift and bought 25 parsnip seeds. I gave Shane beer because I'll fix him later, I want to be loved. I handed out a few more gifts before fishing at the lake. I caught 3 artifacts and chests while fishing and sold the rest of my findings. It's finally time to check out the caves that Demetrius was talking about. I gave Haley a daffodil and reached 4 hearts with her just in time for the dance. I donated a few artifacts to the museum before grabbing my steel pickaxe from Clint's. It was finally time to reach the bottom of the mines. I reached floor 120, picked up the skull key and celebrated by giving the dwarf an aquamarine. I cracked some geodes and donated two artifacts. I headed to the saloon to give Emily an emerald and beat Junimo cart. Went back to the mines to farm copper and looked for door scroll 4. I sold some items in the shipping bin and then passed out. On the farm. Whoops. I hit level 5 combat and chose the fighter profession. I woke up to a letter from the Junimo cart development team. They sent me an arcade system for beating their Apple minigame. I harvested and watered my strawberries. Then I sold them before testing my luck in the mines. Unfortunately, I couldn't find Door Scroll 4, so I cheered myself up by buying the tub of flowers recipe and a rare crow at the flower dance. And then I made myself feel worse by dancing with Haley. I tossed some gold in the furnace before crafting another chest and heading to bed. It was time to harvest more strawberries and look for Door Scroll 4 in the mines. Man, I swear I'm having deja vu. Lucky for me, I found both a strange doll and Door Scroll 4 on floor 95. I farmed more resources, crafted three furnaces, and made more gold bars. And I fell asleep and hit level 7 mining. Day 26 was pouring. No watering for me, just straight profit. Which reminded me, it was Pierre's birthday. I stopped by the traveling car and bought a salmon deer for Alex's birthday. I fished up more catfish and gave Pierre fried calamari. I fished at the ocean and got a rusty spoon in a treasure chest. I sold a few gold bars and fish, then slept. I hit level 6 farming and level 4 foraging. Emily sent me cloth in the mail today. I'll thank you in person later. I caught a few more fish in the river before heading to Emily's. When I opened the door, Haley needed me to open some pickles. I tried to wake up Emily to give her a birthday gift, but... So I shoved a ruby in her face before sprinting to the river. After fishing all day, it was time to sell my profits. Wow, spring is already coming to an end, but this was only the beginning. Emily greeted me at the front door, giving me access to her sewing machine. I harvested the rest of my strawberries and grabbed a gold pomegranate from the fruit cave. I also forged the entire left side of my farm and stuffed a gold leak into my gifts chest. I needed to catch the remaining spring fish today, so I made my way to the ocean. Then I donated Door Scroll 4 to the museum and picked up a Dwarvish translation guide. I stopped by the wizard to give him a solar essence and caught a few river fish. Still no luck catching Leah though. I accepted Willie's fishing challenge at the help wanted board. Catch three largemouth bass. Have I not fished enough already today? Good thing I need to cast my line at the lake already since I have to catch the rest of the spring fish. After fishing I went to the mines to start farming dust sprites for the monster slayer goal. I stopped by the community center to complete the vault, barely making it to bed at 1.50am. The bus upgraded overnight, giving me access to Calico Desert. I started day 29 by placing the lightning rod I got from the vault and opening a letter from my mom. She sent me a pink cake. Perfect for Jazz's birthday. I cleared my farm of the dead spring crops. Thank you strawberries, you treated me well. I decided today was the day I would invest in some sprinklers. 25 to be exact. I placed them on my farm and went to buy some summer seeds. I bought a handful of crops including 80 blueberries and some other crops that needed for cooking. I bought two sunflower seeds from Jojo Mart because I wasn't going to let Pierre scam me. I collected some forage and made my way to the lake. It was time to tackle that largemouth bass quest. I caught the three fish and talked to Willie to earn a little extra cash. I planted all my crops and planted fertilizer on my blueberries. I saved one wheat seed and one melon seed for Ginger Island. I crafted a tapper and placed it on an oak tree. Then I rode the minecarts up to the mines to start working towards the monster eradication goals. And I ended my night. Today started with some organizing. I needed two chests. One for cooking items and another for crafting resources. This would help me save items I needed to use later. I went to the mines to farm gold and gave the dwarf an aquamarine. Smelted and sold some gold bars and hit the hay. 
I started my morning by selling some gold bars and making more before checking the mail. Lewis needed me to retrieve his shorts from a discreet location. I walked to the ocean to start catching the new seasonal fish. I bought 175 bait and a trap bobber from Willie. After I caught some of the summer ocean fish, I headed to the river to catch even more fish. I caught every fish I needed, except for a Dorado. I jogged back to the ocean to get my hands on a few super cucumbers. I also hooked a couple treasure chests with some artifacts inside. I saved a few fish and sold the rest before sleeping. Summer 4 started with a gift to the wizards. I went back to the river in an attempt to catch the Dorado again. It was time to head to Marnie's ranch to give Jazz her birthday gift. Unfortunately, she wouldn't let me in her room to give her a present. I picked up a rainbow shell at the beach before starting to fish. Going back to see if Jazz left her room yet, I bumped into her heading to class. I gave her a pink cake and went to Clint's for a pickaxe upgrade. I donated some items to the museum and headed to Jojo Mart. Since I wasn't resetting any days, I needed a way to access Ginger Island as quickly as possible. Completing the community center would have taken me the rest of the year, whereas if I bought the Jojo Mart membership, I could access Ginger Island much earlier. I guess selling my soul was worth the price of perfection. Sorry not sorry, Pierre. I rode the minecarts up to the lake. I caught a sturgeon before going back to the river in pursuit of this dang Dorado. Unfortunately, it never bit, so I decided to drown my sorrows in the ocean by catching more super cucumbers. I sold my rainbow shell and fish and slept. The first of my summer crops were finished today. Wheat. I harvested them and sold one in the shipping bin. I went to the traveling cart. Should I buy this battery pack? Oh, I don't know, man. That's tough. I decided it was too expensive and went back to the beach. I picked up another rainbow shell and caught my first octopus. I headed back to the river to finally get my hands on that Dorado. I'm trying to get it for three days. I can't do it. I decided to try something new. I took off my hat. I took off my shirt. Took off my pants. Put my pants back on. Changed spots. Took my pants off again. This <laughs> is so dumb. I have fished for this fish for three days. With nothing. I can't believe it. After some mild complaining, I headed to the saloon with my pockets full of gifts. I did my best Santa impression and gave everybody a gift. Except for Pierre. We did not bring anything for Pierre, but kind of frick you. Then I picked up a late night help one quest from Lewis. Slay four red slimes. Then I went to the mines and destroyed the maroon menaces. I walked back to the farm and sold a rainbow shell along with a few random items before tucking into bed. Day 34 was raining. Maybe my luck for the Dorado will change today. I harvested hot peppers and walked to Shane's to gift him before work. Completely forgetting that I already gave him two beers this week, he brutally rejected me. I went to the river and finally caught a Dorado. Oh! You are the worst thing ever. I caught a red snapper in the ocean and went to the museum to donate a rare disc. After donating, I talked to Lewis, completed the slime quest, earning the gopher achievement for finishing my 10th help wanted quest. I picked up a shiny gold pickaxe from Clint's and upgraded my axe. I checked the help wanted board and accepted a quest from Marnie for one radish. Then I went back to the ocean to catch more fish. I finished my night with a game of Junimo cart and slept like a baby. Because it had stormed yesterday, my lightning rod produced a battery pack today. I ran to the mines to buy bombs from the dwarf and give them an Omni Geode. I gave Pam a gold parsnip before riding the bus to Calico Desert. Since it was a Sunday, I was able to train my jade for staircases at the Desert Trader. I also traded for spicy eels, bombs, and desert warp totems. After meeting Sandy, I bought 15 starfruit seeds from her shop. I used the skull key I got on floor 120 of the mines to unlock skull caverns and plunged in. I found my first iridium node on floor 32 and picked up a prehistoric rib from a pepper rex on floor 48. My first treasure floor gave me a blue cowboy hat, which went perfectly with my outfit. On floor 73, I found a prismatic shard and left the mines to get myself a galaxy sword. After heading home, I sold some of my desert findings and smelted some iridium bars. Then I went to sleep hitting level 6 combat and level 9 mining. I started my morning by selling some meridian bars I made last night in the shipping bin. This was going to be my money making source from now on. I got a letter in the mail from Mr. Key asking me to reach floor 25 of Skull Caverns. I guess floor 75 wasn't good enough yesterday. I then harvested my poppies and radishes before planting the starfruit seeds I bought yesterday. I picked up an item delivery request from Demetrius that told me to bring him a sweet pea and went to the blacksmith to receive my copper axe. I headed back to Skull Caverns and made it all the way down to floor 70 while collecting tons of resources. I sold a few more iridium bars and some gems before tucking myself into bed. On day 37, I received mail from Mr. Key congratulating me for making it to floor 25. He sent me 10,000 gold as a reward. He might be my new favorite villager. Gus also sent me the recipe for salmon dinner. Delicious. I made more iridium bars before harvesting my sunflowers, summer spangles, and hot peppers. I gave Shane a hot pepper and earned the clicks achievement. Finally, I'm starting to make some friends. I foraged a sweet pea at the bus stop and went to crack a ton of geodes at Clint's. I ended up getting 27 artifacts and donated all of them to the museum. Gunther was certainly happy to see me today. He gave me a rare crow for my services. I went back to the blacksmith to upgrade my pickaxe to Iridium, then walked to 24 Mountain Lane to give Demetrius the sweet bee I collected. Hey Sebastian, your room decor is looking pretty cool. 
I then took the minecarts to the bus stop to give Pam a parsnip and head back to the desert. I gave Sandy a sweet pea and fished in the desert pond to catch myself a sandfish and a scorpion carp. I went back to the farm to chop some trees and sell resources. With the crimson fish in mind, I ran back to the beach in an attempt to catch my second legendary fish. I grabbed a rainbow shell, but unfortunately I couldn't grab the crimson fish. I passed out on the docks empty-handed. Demetrius thanked me for the sweet pea by teaching me the fried mushroom recipe. I then headed to the mines to collect some bug meat. Drop your bug meat. Alright, we need more than that. After that, I went to the ocean in another attempt to catch the crimson fish. Luckily, I caught him within the hour. I gave Maru a gold cauliflower for her birthday before buying a coop at Robin's. I then handed out a few more gifts around town. I sold some random items I needed for full shipment like a pine cone, a grape, and a rainbow shell. Hold on. I already sold a rainbow shell. No big deal, I'll harvest one later. I crafted a tapper and placed it on an oak tree. Then I rolled into bed hitting level 5 foraging and picking the gatherer profession. On day 39, I did my best lumberjack impression by clearing a handful of trees. I crafted four tappers and made more oak resin. On the way to the luau, I tried to give Shane and Maru gifts, but they both denied me. I arrived at the luau and placed a gold quality cauliflower into the potluck soup. I greeted the rest of town and told Louis to start the show. After taking a sip of the soup, the governor knew that this was the best soup he's ever tasted. Of course it was. I put my blood, sweat, and tears into the soup. Back on the farm, I knocked down a few hardwood stumps before heading to bed. Man, I could really go for some tomato soup right now. Hey, my tomatoes are done. I crafted another chest for more cooking ingredients. Before stopping by the wizards, I headed to the traveling car and purchased a rare seed. Then I gave the wizard a solar essence. I paid a visit to the dwarf, gifted them an aquamarine, and bought a few bombs. Using a desert warp totem, I quickly arrived at Skull Caverns. On floor 22, a slime dropped a prismatic shard. A treasure floor gave me three iridium bars. I left floor 57 with a farm totem and passed out next to my bed. But I'm not losing any energy tomorrow since I hit combat level 7 and mining level 10, choosing the prospector profession for my second max perk. This morning I got a letter in the mail from Emily who sent me a piece of wool. Today was storming and... Yep, Alex, and what? Did you just break my crops? Luckily it didn't break the summer crops that I planned on harvesting today. I made some meridian bars and planted summer seeds. I went to wish Alex a happy birthday but walked in on Harvey giving George a checkup. I gave Alex his ham and dinner and he told me it wasn't a good day for sports. You do know that basketball and hockey exist, right Alex? Anyway, I warped to the desert where it wasn't raining. There I traded Omni Geodes for artifact droves. Then it was time for a Skull Caverns dive. I found a prismatic shard on a treasure floor and killed a Pepper Rex for a prehistoric tibia. On floor 100, the chest contained an auto grabber. Auto grabber! Yo, huge. We have an auto grabber before we have chicken. Then I passed out and reached farming level 7. I started day 42 by learning the pancake recipe and selling 10 iridium bars. I also had a ton of blueberries to collect. I harvested over 100 as well as a single star fruit. I dumped my crops in the bin and went to the traveling cart to buy a rare seed. I gave the wizard a gold purple mushroom before stopping by Marnie's ranch. When I walked in, Shane was laying on the floor surrounded by beer cans. I woke up Shane with my watering can and handed him a hot pepper. I begged Marnie to let me into her room for those magical purple shorts. She wouldn't budge. I walked into town and was greeted by Alex and his dog Dusty. I wanted to see how the rest of the bachelors were doing. Sam and Sebastian asked me what style of music to play for their upcoming concert. I tabbed out to check a message and when I tabbed back in... What? What? I just randomly clicked. Well, I have no idea what I'm going to listen to. I went to check up on Emily and Haley, and well, Emily... Oh yeah, I don't know. Why is there aliens? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Bananas? After being weirded out, I stopped by the help wanted board and accepted a quest to deliver a super cucumber to the wizard. Before heading to the desert, I went to the saloon and told Pam if it wasn't for me buying all these salads, this place would be out of business. Then I gave Gus 5,000 gold to feed my salad addiction. I warped to the desert to trade rubies for spicy eels. After that, I went to Skull Caverns and found a prismatic shard on floor 94 and a seed maker on floor 100. I went home barely making it to bed. Emily taught me the red plate recipe in the mail. I smelt some more iridium bars and sold 20. I also harvested and shipped some corn. Warping to Skull Caverns, I intended to get as much iridium as I could. I found prehistoric floors on floor 16 and floor 78, grabbing myself a fiddlehead fern and a dinosaur egg. I went back to the farm to make and sell more iridium bars as well as the fiddlehead fern I picked up. I head to bed reaching level 8 combat unlocking explosive ammo. I began day 44 by harvesting my tomatoes. Jane showed me how to make strange buns in the mail. I then smelted gold and picked up the iridium bars I put in the furnace yesterday. I went to Robin's carpenter shop to buy a telephone and a silo. Entering town I became a movie star for Jojo Mart. Then I headed there myself to give Shane a hot pepper. I brought you a hot pepper for my hot bo- Embarrassed from my rejection, I bought the greenhouse development project for Morris. Evelyn had to help one quest on the board to deliver a melon. I handed a leak to George, then gave Evelyn a diamond, a melon, and... Oh, I didn't mean to give you wood. Uh, ah! Gosh! <laughs> That's not what I meant. 
I went on a gifting spree all over town before buying some fruit trees from Pierre. Then I delivered more gifts and ran to Sebastian who was working on his motorcycle and offered me a ride. I gave him a frozen tear and went back to handing out more gifts to the villagers. Ending the night I had a beer with Shane, sold my reading bars and went to sleep. Overnight the greenhouse was built. It was finally time to harvest oak resin and pine tar for my tappers as well as a few sunflowers. I planted the trees I bought yesterday in the greenhouse before finally getting the shorts from Marn. Wait two hours yet? Dang. I purchased two chickens named Egg Sheeran and Ego Waffle. Trying to enter Leah's house to give her a gift, she then I was trying to say, I answered. Take your salad and leave me alone. Going into town, I Oh my gosh, not you too. Honey, leave George alone. I'm just trying to give Sam his birthday gift. I'm going through torture. I finally arrived at Sam's house to give him Oh, I don't have a gift or I bought pizza at the saloon and gave it to Sam at Jojo Mart before heading to Clint's to buy 70 coal. I donated a handful of items to the museum, then I went to the Adventurer's Guild to buy explosive ammo, which I used in Skull Caverns. But I may have spent too much time mining because I passed out. On my pillow. Good morning Gunther, I didn't expect to see you here this early but thanks for the rusty key. I harvested all my crops before heading to the desert to trade 3 prismatic shards for a magic rock candy. I ate the magic rock candy before heading into Skull Caverns. I found 4 prismatic shards today along with 3 rain totems on floor 99 and a rabbit's foot on floor 101 from a serpent. I made it all the way down to floor 152 before calling it a night. I began my day by crafting 5 quality sprinklers. If I was going to establish my crop empire, I needed to start now. I collected oak resin from my tappers and ran to the traveling cart. There I bought a duck egg and a rare seed. Then I collected golden iridium bars from my furnaces before selling them in the shipping bin. I crafted 6 more quality sprinklers and should have been able to craft more but I sold too many gold bars and was short on resources. It's too late now. I scythed grass on the farm to fill my silo and headed to the blacksmith. I bought 40 coal and went back into town to open the sewers. There I met Krobus and gave him a horseradish as a welcoming gift. Since it's Friday, he's selling an iridium sprinkler which I'll happily buy. I also bought a few speed grow to begin setting up my greenhouse. I gave out some gifts and made sure to give Demetrius a gold strawberry for his birthday. I went back to the farm and finished my greenhouse before selling more bars and heading to bed. Demetrius sent me a quest to get him a melon. Hey, I just gave you something yesterday. Be grateful. I chopped some trees and hardwood stones before running up to 24 Mountain Lane. There, Demetrius lectured me about treating Mara right and then had a debate with Robin about tomatoes belonging in fruit salad. I was just trying to build a barn and visit Sebastian. I headed down to Cindersat Forest where I found Shane passed out. I took him to Harvey's clinic and went to Marty's ranch. After talking to her, I finally reached two hearts, which means I could grab Lewis's shorts. I motivated Alex to try more things, like this egg I gave him. Then I went to upgrade my axe to steel. I bought 20 salads and coffees before buying a handful of trees from Pierre. I went to the sewer to catch the mutant carp, my third legendary fish, before warping to the desert to visit Sandy and give her a gift. I then went home to plant my trees in the greenhouse. I went back into town to discreetly deliver Lewis's purple underpants. At the Adventurer's Guild, I saw I was only 10 Pepper X kills from finishing my goal. I farmed more dust sprites in the mines and passed out hitting level 6 foraging. Shane thanked me for helping him yesterday. I told him it was no problem at all but I had to get going so I could harvest my star fruit and craft a few lightning rods. I warped to the desert to trade for staircases and mega bombs. Then it was time to dive into skull caverns. I found a few prismatic shards as well as a prehistoric floor. After killing a few pepper X's, I finished my monster slayer goal. After a successful day in the depths I warped home to smelt iridium bars. I hit level 8 farming and level 9 combat. It's marinara monday. Gus told me I reminded him of a sauce. He gave me a mini jukebox before heading off. I harvested my melons and blueberries along with a few battery packs from yesterday's storm. I sold my crops before smelting more ores into bars. I then headed to the mines to give the dwarf and aquamarine for their birthday. I grabbed my steel axe from Clint and sold 26 iridium bars so I could buy 75 coal. At Jojo Mart I bought the panning development. I gifted Linus, Maru, and Sebastian before giving Demetrius the melon he asked for along with a strawberry. Finally it was time to use my steel axe to get into the secret woods. I collected hardwood and got my hands on a wood skip. On my way home I gave the wizard void essence. Back on the farm I chopped more trees so I could craft 7 kegs. I placed them at the bus stop and started making starfruit wine. I crafted 2 crystallariums and loaded them with jade to help me trade for more staircases before finishing my night. Day 51 began by harvesting the parsnips I planted in the greenhouse. I chopped hardwood before I planned to gift the entire town. Every. Single. Villager. I went to Jojo Mart to buy the bridge development which was my last Jojo upgrade. I then warped to the desert to give Sandy a gift and bought starfruit seeds as well as trading for artifact droves. I sold some potatoes to Pierre before buying poppies and summer spangles which I planted in my greenhouse. I went to the mountains and Willie handed me a copper pan. I handed Linus a coconut and in return he taught me the wild bait recipe. I farmed dust sprites in the mines and sold monster drops before sleeping. This morning Jody told me fry calamari in the mail and I harvested hot peppers, tomatoes, and oak resin. 
I chopped cardboard on my farm and crafted a few kegs which I placed at the bus stop before filling them with starfruit. I headed into town to trigger the Jojo Mart completion cutscene, but... It's raining. Which means I won't be able to get to Ginger Island today. That's okay, there's always tomorrow. When I entered town, I accepted a quest from Clint to find 35 copper ore. I made my way to the beach where I found Haley's lost bracelet behind Elliot's cabin. Then I gave Willie an iridium quality catfish for his birthday before being attacked by crabs. I visited Elliot who asked me what type of genre of book I liked. I told him sci-fi hoping that he would tell Sebastian that we were into the same style. Then I saw Sebastian walk into the pier and stop for a conversation before heading to buy crab cakes at the saloon. I went back to the beach to give Elliot one before giving gifts around town. I then went to the quarry to clear all the stones and get myself a golden scythe. I ended my night farming dust sprites in the mines before passing out. I woke up today planning to finally complete Jojo Mart. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Since it was raining and it was a bad luck day, I decided today would be another gifting day. I finally reached two hearts with Caroline today, so it was time to unlock her tea room. But alas, the summer downpour has ruined my life yet again and I was forced to leave tea list. I went to talk to Clint to complete my copper collecting quest before continuing my gifting around town. Then I was back to the mines to kill more dust sprites before heading to sleep. As much as I love rain, this is getting out of hand. At least my blueberries were ready to be collected. I accepted a ghost slaying quest before heading to Lewis's Matter for Emily's fashion show. Clint told me congrats for being friends with Emily, which I thought was quite odd since I was in love with a motorcycle riding man. <laughs> I don't know what your problem is. He tells me congratulations, it's so awkward. I also stopped by the general store to grab a bouquet for a future date. Then stopping by Clint's to rub in his face that I was better friends with Emily than <laughs> Then stopping by Clint's to crack Geo so I can donate more artifacts to the museum. I slayed a ghost in the mines and did some much needed chest organizing. I laid in bed for the night and since I sold my 300 blueberry today I got the achievement monoculture. This morning, Leah showed up at my door with a statue called How I Feel About Ethan. I know I was trying to catch your attention earlier, but you're a little too late. I only have eyes for Sebastian. I collected battery packs and headed into town. There's a rainbow at the end of every storm. And my rainbow is a six foot tall blue vending machine that tasted like Joja Cola. I entered Caroline's sunroom and after drinking some tea, I was on my way back to the farm to harvest oak resin. I talked to the wizard to complete his help wanted quest and ventured back into town. Almost getting run over by Sam on a skateboard, I went to the beach where I found him and Vincent playing in the sand. Hey Sam, how'd you beat me here? I went to the saloon to buy salads, coffees, and pancakes for Jody's birthday. I thanked Gus with a diamond before going back to the mines to continue working on my Monster Slayer goals. Then I went to sleep. It was finally time to unlock Willie's boat today. It really is the perfect time to head down to the beach, say hi to Willie, and enjoy the dance in the moonlight. Oh no. Oh, I can't get the boat unlocked today because we're it's at the beach. Uh... I guess learning how to make bread will solve all my problems. I had two letters today. Caroline sent me a tea sapling recipe and Willie Willie unlocked the back room. Thanks, Willie, but I can't go in there. I crafted three kegs and a tea sapling before petting my chickens and chopping some trees. I bought a rare seed from the traveling car and stopped by the secret woods to collect hardwood. Then I walked back into Cindersap Forest and saw Leah struggling. I'll help you, Leah. Oh my goodness! I deforested the valley before planting pine cones to grow more trees. I placed a few kegs at the bus stop before arriving at the beach. The peaceful music played as summer came to an end. The new season started with some much needed farm chores. I crafted and placed more quality sprinklers and made a ton of fertilizer using sap I had lying around. I collected starfruit wine from my kegs and accepted a quest from Demetrius to deliver an amethyst. I went to Pierre's store and sold him 6 starfruit wine for a solid 11,000 gold. Then I used that money to buy the seeds I needed for fall. I placed some strawberries I had saved from spring in kegs at the bus stop. I then sold gold and iridium bars to Clint and bought more seeds. Finally I was able to head to Willie's fish shop and enter his back room. I repaired the boat instantly but it wasn't going to be available till tomorrow. I planted my fall seeds and went to hand Demetrius the amethyst he asked for. After reaching Max's friendship with him, I went into Sebastian's room to play Solarian Chronicles. I picked Warrior as my class to show Sebastian how cool and protective I was. We're gonna go with the Warrior. You know, we gotta impress our boy, Sebastian. Hey, hey, listen. After finishing with the C rating, I gave Sebastian a frozen tear. Oh, seven hearts! We can date soon. I went home to craft and place more sprinklers, then planted the rest of my crops and added fertilizer for better profits. I went to sleep and overnight the boat finally got repaired. Willie sent me a letter this morning inviting me to take a ride on his boat. I harvested poppies from the greenhouse just in time for Penny's birthday. I walked into town unlocking the special orders board. 
I handed out gifts to the town along with Penny's birthday present. I went to check out the new board in town and accept the crop or request to ship 100 bok choy by the end of the season. Then I went into Willie's shop and purchased a ticket for the Ginger Island Cruise Line. I found my first golden walnut in the jungle and met the mysterious boy in his tree hut. I wandered around the island in search of more walnuts. I entered the volcano dungeon and found a protection ring on floor 1 and a dwarf hammer on floor 3. I would have to complete the dungeon another day because I passed out on floor 9. Marnie aggressively woke me up asking for a cave carrot. Why do people wake me up at 6am to ask me to do things for them? Can't they visit me for fun? I thought they liked me. No Marnie, please move. My Wednesday work is calling for me. I harvested oak resin from my tappers, crops from my greenhouse, and starfruit wine from the bus stop. I then crafted a bee house and three more cakes. I stopped by Marnie's to give her a cave carrot and a diamond. Lewis was there to make sure to make sure Marnie's needs are met. What? On the help wanted board, Abigail requested an amethyst for a prank on her dad. Anything to ruin Pierre's life. Then I went to Ginger Island to complete the volcano dungeon. I found a dragon tooth on floor 4 and made my way to floor 10. In the chest I found a prismatic shard. I forged my dwarf hammer with 2 rubies giving me a damage upgrade. I caught a lava eel in the fiery lake and then gave a parrot 10 golden walnuts to unlock the west part of the island. I placed a few sprinklers along with a melon and a wheat seed and passed out. Caroline sent me the parsnip soup recipe in the mail. I went to thank her in person but stumbled across Pierre's missing stash. I gave a daffodil to Pierre hoping he would forget about my findings. I completed Abigail's amethyst quest and gave her a second one as a gift. I handed the dwarf an aquamarine, earning myself the popular achievement. I also treated Sebastian to a frozen tear before warping to the desert from his house. After giving Sandy a sweet pea, I bought 20 starfruit seeds. Then stopping by the desert trader for totems, artifact troves, spicy eels, and magic rock candy. Back on the farm, I made iron bars and harvested my greenhouse. At the train station, the wizard asked me to fetch his magic ink from his ex-lover's swamp. He told me visiting Krobus might help me find it. Krobus told me the way to find the magic ink was through the dark talisman. Luckily, he remembered it was lost in the mutant bug lair. I found the dark talisman, then caught myself a slime jack. Since it was late, I decided to try and catch a midnight carp, but ended up passing out, reaching level 9 farming overnight. It was time to get my hands on that magic ink. I headed up to the train station to use the dark talisman to access the witch's swamp. The henchman requested void mayonnaise in order to enter, but luckily there was some in the water along with a void salmon. I stole the magic ink back and gave it to the wizard. I also gave him a purple mushroom before buying plum pudding at the traveling cart. I gave Elliot a 6 month old pomegranate for his birthday. Then I purchased 100 bok choy seeds from Pierre. I handed out more gifts around town and caught some of the new seasonal fish. I stargazed with Mara in the mountains before catching a midnight carp. In the mines I killed more dust sprites until I passed out. More crops were ready this morning. I harvested them and went back to Ginger Island. There the young boy told me his name was Leo and he washed up on shore after a big storm. I gave him a spice berry before heading to Island West to mine muscle nodes and collect some more golden walnut. Today my memory wasn't doing too well and I passed out after failing Simon Says four times. On day 63 I went back to Ginger Island first thing in the morning to get my revenge. I cleared all the debris and placed more sprinklers on the farm. Then I planted my bok choy seeds. I found a few more golden walnuts and beat Simon Says. First try! I used the walnuts I gathered to buy the island farmhouse and the dig site. I used a bomb on the cave to let Professor Snail out, then went to the island field office to complete the surveys and donate both fossilized legs. Then I passed out again. I don't think I've slept in my bed this season yet. Whoops. Since the farmhouse was built yesterday, I woke up on the island. It was raining so I looked for one of the gem birds which I found on Island North. After picking up an aquamarine from him, I went to the dig site and found a snake skull. I rode the boat back to the valley and accepted a quest on the special orders board to catch ocean fish. Then I went to the farm to harvest my greenhouse and cranberries. I headed to Clint's to crack a few golden coconuts, finding a walnut and a banana sapling. I spent my remaining funds on coal before going to the bus stop to collect my wine and juice. After filling my kegs with starfruit and cranberries, I went to Pierre's to sell my goods. At the saloon, Elliot and I toasted to our friendship. I bought 30 salads and gave one to Leah. Since it was blackberry season today, I harvested a few bushes and found Linus's lost basket. After taking the minecarts to the mountains, I ran into Sebastian who asked if I was making a lot of money on the farm. Oh, you know it, boy. You can move in with me. I gave Linus his missing basket and went to farm dust sprites in the mines. On my way home, I gave the dwarf an aquamarine and went to bed at my favorite time. 1.50 AM. I started my morning harvesting my greenhouse before going to give Sebastian a gift. I bought a TV from Robin and asked her to upgrade my coop. Then I gave a few gifts before riding the boat to the island. I crafted and placed more sprinklers and planted fairy rows. I fished, collecting two golden walnuts and some of the island fish. I went to the dig site to continue fishing. There I caught a fossilized spine and donated it to Professor Snail before going to the dungeon to farm resources. I didn't make it very far though, passing out on floor 1. 
Today, my honey was finally done and ready to be shipped. I found the green gem bird on Island West before riding Willie's boat home. I gave gifts to Alex and Sam before going to the bus stop to harvest and make more wine. Then I collected oak resin and crafted five more kegs. I placed them at the bus stop before farming for more dust sprays to end my night. Sam woke me up to invite me to see his band play. I told him I was busy today and headed straight to the desert. I traded for magic rock candy, artifact troves, and spicy eels and dove into skull caverns. On floor 30, a mummy dropped red cabbage seeds. Red cabbage seeds? Yo! I found a chest with quality sprinklers and found seven prismatic shards today. I also found an auto grabber and an auto petter. This was the best day ever. I did everything today, except tell Jody happy birthday. I passed out on floor 165 and reached level 10 combat. I chose the brute profession for 15% more damage. Day 68 started with more iridium bar smelting. I placed my auto petter in the coop. Hopefully my auto petter can convince my chickens to love me. Then I placed the auto grabber I found in the barn. In the greenhouse, I harvested my sweet gem berries and the rest of my crops. I planted red cabbage seeds before crafting more furnaces. In the secret woods, I gave Old Master Cannoli the sweetest taste and was rewarded with my second star drop. I sold some resources to Pierre and Clint before going to the desert. There I bought 88 starfruit seeds from Sandy and thanked her with a sweet pea. After riding the bus back to the valley, Sam told me to get back on so I can attend his concert in Zuzu City. Dang, Sebastian, you played so well. Can I take you on a date later? I sold a few items at Pierre's before heading to my date. I forgot an umbrella, but luckily Sebastian brought one for me. I spent my night fishing, completing the Biome Balance quest. I sold fish and a sweet gem berry and slept. Since it stormed yesterday, I collected battery packs for my lightning rods. I harvested crops before replacing my quality sprinklers with iridium sprinklers. I planted starfruit in the greenhouse before accepting a quest from George to bring him a blackberry. I gave Abigail a gold pumpkin for her birthday and bought myself 20 pumpkin seeds. After planting them on the farm, I gave George a blackberry, completing his quest. I headed to Ginger Island and found a fossilized rib on the beach. I harvested my bok choy, earning two golden walnuts. After shipping the crops, I placed sprinklers and planted fall seeds and starfruit. I donated the fossilized rib before ending my night. Today, the Queen of Sauce taught me trout soup. Then I finished my island farm setup. I collected a few golden walnuts before buying the island resort. I entered island southeast and found more walnuts. Back on the farm, I harvested 125 pumpkins. I gave one to Abigail before selling the rest of my gold pumpkins to Pierre. I headed to Clint to crack open golden coconuts and geodes. Then I donated what I had to the museum. I arrived back at Pierre's and bought 130 more pumpkin seeds. I warped to the desert to trade jade for staircases. I bought 80 starfruit seeds from Sandy and planted both the seeds I bought today on the island. I gave Leo a gift and played darts at the Pirate's Cove, winning myself three golden walnuts. I caught a stingray and went to sleep. I gave Leo a spice berry before heading to the mainland. I picked up a special orders quest from Clint to slay 50 bats. I harvested wine at the bus stop and filled the kegs with pumpkins. I went to Pierre's to buy more pumpkin seeds and planted them back on my farm. In the greenhouse, I placed a mango and banana sapling and harvested my pumpkins. I warped to the desert to give Sandy her birthday gift. You stop! I went back home to get another sweet pea which I finally gave to her. I gave a pumpkin to Crobus before heading to Ginger Island. I found the red gem bird on Island South meaning I could complete the gem puzzle. Finishing the puzzle gave me 5 golden walnuts. I stopped by the gourmet frog cave to show him the melon and wheat I grew. I bought the Parrot Express upgrade and used it to enter the volcano. I found 5 more walnuts in the dungeon as well as journal scraps revealing other walnut locations. In an attempt to run back to my bed I passed out. I started day 72 by finding the journal scrap golden walnuts. Then I warped home using a farm totem. Back on the farm I collected oak resin and smelted copper bars. I also harvested blueberries and ancient fruit in my greenhouse. After placing an ancient fruit in the seed maker I crafted more kegs to place at the bus stop. I filled the kegs, sold my blueberries, and grabbed items to set up my grange display. At the fair, I placed a gold legend, gold crimson fish, triple shot espresso, gold cauliflower, gold starfruit, prismatic shard, gold purple mushroom, rabbit's foot, and cloth. For my display, Lewis gave me a rating of 107, putting me in first place with a reward of 1000 star tokens. At the spinning wheel, I bet all my money on green to double my tokens and bought my third star drop. Maybe I shouldn't have spent all my tokens. Now I can't afford the rare crow. I played the slingshot game in order to earn enough tokens for the rare crow. Leaving the fair, I shipped Bok Choy to complete the crop order quest. I also collected and shipped pumpkin juice before hitting the mines. I killed bats for cave patrol and ended up passing out on my way back. Lewis thanked me for finishing his quest with a hefty 4,400 gold as well as a mini shipping bin. I placed the bin in my coop and gave my chicken some attention. I collected 8 oak resin before crafting and placing more tappers. 
Elliot serenaded me on his piano and I thanked him with a gold pomegranate. I went to the mines to farm dust sprites, bats, and skeletons for my monster slayer goals. This time I made it back to bed on time. Today's harvest day. Both my cranberries and starfruit are ready to be gathered. I grabbed ancient fruit seeds from my seed maker and planted them in the greenhouse. I harvested my fruit trees before crafting tree fertilizer. I handed out a few gifts around town before I had a doctor's visit with Harvey. I barged in on Marnie's appointment to wish her a happy birthday. I placed eight cakes at the bus stop and filled them with the most valuable thing I could get my hands on. Starfruit. I placed acorns at the train station and placed tree fertilizer on top. I went to the mines to complete the Dust Sprite Monster Slayer goal. Then I slept peacefully. It's mail time! Marnie sent me the rhubarb pie recipe in the mail. Caroline also sent me a letter to deliver her a pumpkin to carve. I harvested oak resin from my tappers and foraged from the left side of my farm. I crafted 30 tree fertilizer before giving the wizard a purple mushroom. In order to supply my ever-growing army of kegs, I needed to chop trees in cinder sap forest. I placed starfruit and pumpkins in my kegs and went to harvest my starfruit wine. Uh-oh. What happened to my kegs? You. I forgot that Pam walked here and she destroyed my kegs last night. Which means I just lost over 10,000 gold. Pam, you ruined my day. I picked up a help water quest from Demetrius to slay two lava crabs before selling my juice to Pierre. I cleared all the rocks in the quarry and started my tree farm. Before entering the mines, I gave the dwarf a gift and went to floor 70 to kill skeletons and bats. At the Adventurer's Guild, Marlin gave me a burglar's ring which would help me get more resources for monsters. I went to sleep tonight thinking about my broken kegs. Robin finally finished my coop so I could place the duck egg I bought in the incubator. In the greenhouse, I harvested blueberries and red cabbage. Since I wanted to make more red cabbage seeds, I placed it in the seed maker. I collected fruit from my trees and went to the mines to work on my monster slayer goals. I started by killing void spirits and lava bats before hunting down the two lava crabs that Demetrius requested. I found him outside of the mines and completed his help warned quest. Back in the mines on floor 111, I finished the cave patrol quest by killing my 50th bat. Clint gave me a nice 6,000 gold for my efforts. I harvested and placed juice in the shipping bin before stopping by the saloon to enjoy my Saturday night. I headed to bed and made the money I lost from Pam yesterday. Eat that, Pam! I started my day bright and early harvesting crops before going to the desert to trade for staircases. I grabbed a few of the desert forage and chopped some trees before buying 100 starfruit and 10 beets from Sandy. I went home to plant starfruit in my greenhouse, but first I had to destroy my blueberries. I went to the carpenter shop to buy crafting recipes and learn how to craft a drum block and a flute block. While I was there, Maru had me test out a new invention which accidentally electrocuted me. I left Robbins to head to the sewer to visit my favorite shadow boy. Before I went to Ginger Island, I gave Willie a pumpkin reaching 10 hearts with him. On the island, I gathered pineapples, honey, and forage. I used the forage to craft more fall seeds to continue leveling up my foraging skill. At the dig site, I used a copper pan to find a fossilized tail which I donated to the island field office. I slept in the island farmhouse tonight. This morning, I got my last muscle node walnut. The wizard had a special orders board request to find a prismatic jelly in the mines. I reset floor 5 looking for the rainbow slime and found him on floor 6 within a few hours. I went straight to the wizards to deliver the jelly and gave him a purple mushroom. Back in the mines I found a monster floor on floor 7 and worked my way towards my slime monster slayer goal. I used the copper I farmed to craft 9 furnaces and started smelting gold before hitting the hay. I had a ton of gold bars done this morning as well as mail from the wizard. He sent me the monster musk recipe which would be a huge help for this challenge. I used resources to craft 2 monster musk and 6 iridium sprinklers. My cranberries and ancient fruit were ready to be harvested today. I collected everything and put an ancient fruit in the seed maker. I gathered pumpkin juice before going back to my greenhouse to pick up 2 ancient fruit seeds. In town I sold my juice to Pierre and hit 8 hearts with Penny by giving her a poppy. On Ginger Island I set up more sprinklers and planted almost 100 fall seeds and 46 star fruit. In the volcano dungeon I used monster musk to increase the amount of magma sprites on each floor. I needed to kill 150 of them to finish the eradication goal. I also found another walnut and a journal scrap in the mines before passing out. I wanted to check in with Leo this morning so I headed to the jungle. On my way to the hut I picked up a mummified frog from the weeds. I gave Leo a spice berry and went to donate the mummified frog. I collected a walnut from Professor Snail which I used to buy the farm obelisk upgrade. I warped home to craft more kegs to place at the bus stop. I stopped by the mourners to give George a leak for his birthday before stopping by the Star Drop Saloon to buy more coffee. I cracked a golden coconut at Clint's and got a fossilized skull. The last item I need to complete the bear exhibit at the island field office. I went to the museum where Elliot read me a sci-fi book he wrote and I donated some artifacts. Then it was time to head back to the island to craft more sprinklers and plant more seeds. I donated the skull and collected 6 golden walnuts from Snail. In the volcano I gathered cinder shards and dragon teeth. I tried to make it to the island farmhouse but passed out. The first of my fairy rose honey was done today. I harvested and shipped it before unlocking Key's walnut room. I picked up one of Key's special quests to score 50,000 points in Junimo Kart. I headed to the sewer to give Krobus a gift. 
At the bus stop, my pumpkin juice was finished, so I picked them up before entering my coop. My brand new duck hatched today, and I named him Duck Norris. I fed my chickens before planting both a mango and banana sapling in the greenhouse. At Pierre's, I sold 15 pumpkin juice and two sweet gem berries. Next, I had some important business at the saloon. I gave Gus an orange, bought 20 coffees, and booted up Junimo cart. The goal of the quest was to get 50,000. I also got 60,000. 70,000, 80,000, and uh, 130,000. I guess that's okay. My bad. For scoring 80,000 more points than I needed, I was given 10 key gems. Yippee. I went to the desert to buy more star fruit and trade for magic rock candy. Then I went to the sewers to purchase a star drop from Krobus. Now that I know Leo, this is a little awkward. I needed to get to Ginger Island, so I headed straight to Willie's shop and entered. Are you serious? Instead of arriving at the island, I went to the quarry and gathered over a thousand wood. I placed the trees with pine cones and headed into the mines. I farmed slimes for the rest of the night before dozing off. Overnight, I hit level 9 foraging. Today was a big day. I collected 15 copper bars from my furnaces and used them to craft tappers. I harvested pumpkins, eggplants, and starfruit. I planted more starfruit in my greenhouse and picked up 10 oak resin from tappers on the farm. I gathered and replaced 11 starfruit wine at the bus stop and went to Pierre's to sell my goods. Pierre gave me over 35,000 gold, which was enough to buy 105 coal. I warped to the desert to visit Sandy. Hello, Sandy. I warped to the desert to visit Sand Woman. I bought 61 starfruit seeds in order to fill my greenhouse. I added another 10 kegs to the bus stop and started making more starfruit wine. On Ginger Island, it was raining, so I walked to Island Southeast to solve the mermaid puzzle. She gave me 5 golden walnuts for playing her tune. My starfruit was also ready to be harvested on the island. I planted more before cooking 5 triple shot espresso. Back at the valley, I overheard a conversation between Lewis and his girlfriend. I decided to end my night by giving gifts to everyone at the saloon. Outside of the saloon, I gave Robin a- No! You suck! Demetrius somehow stole Robin's gift. I guess he was really excited to get a present from me. I had a strawberry for Demetrius, so I guess I'll give it to Robin. We'll give you this. No, stop, Demetrius. Here's a strawberry. I'm out. I headed to the mines to farm void spirits and slimes before passing out. Another batch of my kegs were done this morning. I collected pumpkin juice and replaced them with starfruit before heading back to the mines. I farmed more monsters and bought both a rare crow and the weathered floor recipe from the dwarf. I continued farming monsters until I arrived at the Spirit's Eve festival. I forgot I needed to buy both a jack-o'-lantern recipe and a rare crow. Maybe I shouldn't have spent all my money. I found a golden pumpkin in the haunted maze and left. Since I couldn't reset the day, I was stuck till next year. I collected and sold gold bars before heading off to sleep. Winter was approaching quickly. I removed all the hay from my silo and stored it in a chest. I harvested 50 cranberries and 122 pumpkins along with the fruit trees and cabbages in my greenhouse. Then I scythed all the hay on my farm. I headed into Cinderstat Forest and was greeted by Penny and the kids. I talked about being a farmer to Vincent and Jazz before entering the sewer. Once I arrived, Krobus and the dwarf were having a disagreement. The wizard intervened and the dwarf left peacefully. I gave Krobus a gift before going to the desert to trade for more staircases. It was Starfruit Sunday. I purchased 42 seeds before eating magic rock candy and entering Skull Caverns. I collected a handful of resources and passed out as fall came to a close. Winter started with me destroying all my sprinklers. I harvested my fruit cave and read the mail. Krobus sent me the recipe for the dark sign. At the bus stop I saw a shadow guy. Hey Krobus, is that you? I collected juice from my kegs before heading into town. Following the footprints in the snow led me to a bush where the creature I saw at the bus stop was hiding. I received a magnifying glass which I could use to find secret notes hidden all over the valley. At the sewers I wished Krobus a happy birthday with a gold quality pumpkin. On the special orders board Demetrius asked me to catch 10 link gods. I arrived at the beach to begin winter forage farming for some extra money. I have this whole video on how on earth to do this and why it's useful to know. Basically, I till and until a spot on the beach until I find either a snowy M or a winter root. Using a pattern, I can make sure every till produces winter forage. Winter roots sell for 70 gold and snowy M sell for 100 gold so I can earn money extremely quickly. On Ginger Island, I sold my snowy M's and winter roots in the shipping bin before harvesting all my crops. I placed the sprinklers I broke this morning for more farm space. I crafted and planted 100 more fall seeds to keep working towards maxing every skill. Maybe I shouldn't have destroyed all my sprinklers because of the walnut room I accepted the Key's crop quest. Key fruit is one of the only crops that can grow in winter. I passed out on my way back to the farmhouse. I had more fall forage to collect this morning, used it to craft and plant 240 fall seeds. 
Gus was on the island today, so I bought the tropical curry recipe, pale ale, and mead. I gave Leo a spice berry before going to the Valley River to catch link cod. While fishing, I got my first key bean. I sold the juice from yesterday along with the pale ale meat I bought. I went into the coop to place a dino egg in the mayonnaise maker and realized I didn't have a heater for my animals. I walked to cinder sap bars to catch the glacier fish. Thanks to my trap bobber, I caught it right away. I also fished in the ocean of lake for the seasonal fish and found more key beans. On my way home, I harvested starfruit wine in my kegs before selling it and going to sleep. On day 87, I planted key beans in the snow before harvesting my greenhouse. I added more ancient fruit to the soil and went to Marty's ranch. I bought two cows named Milk and Choco Milk after one of my closest friends. I also purchased a pail and two heaters. I chopped trees in Cinder Sap Forest and found a secret note from Haley and Emily's parents. I found 11 more key beans and gathered a Nautilus shell on the beach. Then I headed to the mountain to give Robin a peach and upgrade my house. I gave Sebastian an early birthday present before giving Linus an actual birthday present. I went home to plant key beans and placed heaters in my coop and barn. I headed to the saloon to hand out gifts and bought coffees and salads. I don't know why I broke my sprinklers. Now I have to set them up again. I crafted five kegs, placed them at the bus stop, and passed out. I thanked Robin for working on my house upgrade by giving her a peach. I crafted tappers to place on trees at the railroad. Then at the quarry, I used tree fertilizer on pine cones. I went to forage at the beach because the money was too good to say no to. In the mines, I did some slime slang before heading to the bus stop to harvest starfruit wine. I sold both the wine and my winter forage and made over 60,000 gold today. Awesome. I started my morning by harvesting oak resin and checking the traveling cart. I bought blue jazz for the lucky lunch dish. I purchased an iridium sprinkler from Krobus and headed back to the beach to... Can you guess? Winter forage. I harvested 10 more starfruit wine at the bus stop and sold my goods before sleeping. I woke up to a mansion and the millionaire achievement to go with it. I harvested starfruit in my greenhouse before upgrading my coop. My chickens deserve a mansion too. Hopefully Sandy can buy a house upgrade soon with the 120,000 gold I dumped in her lap in exchange for starfruit seeds. I broke my wallet by heading to Ginger Island, but luckily my fall forage was ready to be harvested. I placed four iridium sprinklers and planted starfruit before heading to the lake to catch link cod. Well, maybe the river would be better. Wow. Come on. Zero? Oh, it's already 2 a.m. Whoa, is anyone in there? What, what in the world? What the heck? Nice place you got. Who would be babbling this early? I wish I was a millionaire. Please give me money. Why does everyone keep knocking on my doorstep early in the morning every time they want something from me? I wish I was rich like Morris. Okay, what do you want? Uh, uh, excuse me, sir. I've just stopped by to let you know I'm selling a wider variety of seeds next spring. If you buy from me, you'll be twice as productive next year. Pierre, I bought enough seeds to feed myself for the next 91 years. Speaking of seeds, my key fruit is ready. I harvested them before going to Pierre's to wish his wife a happy birthday. I went to the lake to catch link cod. After failing for a few hours, I decided to chop trees down in Cinder Sap Forest. I crafted seed makers to manufacture my own key seeds. I collected duck mail from the coop to place in my mini shipping bin. Well, we hit 10 hearts with her. Then I continued to harvest and plant more key beans. I went to the desert to celebrate Staircase Sunday. On my way back to the farm, I picked up 17 more starfruit wine to sell before going to bed. I headed straight to the mines to finish my Void Spirit Eradication goal. I found a few secret notes and completed the Dougie Slayer goal. On the special orders board, I accepted a quest from the wizard to find an ectoplasm. I reset floor 55 until I found a ghost that dropped it. I also found 17 key beans and planted them on my farm. I tried to remove everything from my coop so the upgrade wouldn't destroy the items, but I passed out. I have plenty of key fruit ready to be harvested and turned into key beans. I placed the items back in the coop and milked my milk. I used a rain totem and brought maple syrup to the secret woods. There I was rewarded with bear's knowledge. I headed to the wizard's tower to give him the ectoplasm and completed the quest. At the saloon, I bought 50 coffees before donating items to the museum. I gave gifts around town, winter forage, and slept. I started my morning by brewing 15 cups of triple shot espresso. I went to Marnie's to buy five rabbits. I wasn't feeling too creative today and named them rabbit, Rabbit, Ribbit, Robbit, and Rubbit. It was the perfect weather for Sebastian, so I thought it would be the perfect time to ask him to be my boyfriend. After he said yes, I gave him a frozen tear for his birthday, instantly reaching 10 hearts. I bought a mermaid's pennant at the beach and asked Sebastian to be my husband. I'm not moving too fast. This is healthy love. We may have gone from just friends to fiancés in 30 minutes, but I knew that he was the one. I also reached 10 hearts with Clint, which I was less excited about. I then chopped trees at the quarry and harvested oak resin at the railroad. I arrived at Ginger Island ready to harvest my fall forage. 
I gathered starfruit and beets before planting a ton of starfruit seeds. In the jungle, I placed a banana on the shrine, summoning a gorilla that rewarded me with three golden walnuts. I stopped by the sewers to buy a void egg from Krobus. At the bus stop, I harvested and replaced starfruit wine before dumping it in the shipping bin. I stored beets in a chest for later and hit the hay. I also hit level 10 foraging, my last max skill. I chose the botanist profession. I haven't crafted kegs in a while. I need 14. Now. I was able to turn 34 key fruit I harvested into 64 key beans using seed makers. I collected and planted crops in the greenhouse before gathering wine and placing more kegs. The bus stop was starting to look like a factory. I headed to Pierre's to sell starfruit wine. 160,000 gold later, I warped to the desert to buy starfruit seeds and trade for magic rock candy. On the island, Leo and I talked about nature back home in the valley. The botanist profession allowed me to collect all iridium forage. I gathered and planted starfruit before heading home to sleep. On day 96, I gathered key fruit and oak resin on the farm. I bought a squid at the traveling cart and gave the wizard a purple mushroom. My urge to mine had been growing stronger by the day. For the first time in a while, I decided to return to Skull Caverns. I gathered resources and completed the monster slayer goal for serpents before passing out. I woke up to the sounds of... Music? Wait a minute. This is my wedding! Shoot, I forgot to put on my suit. Oh, I can't show up to my wedding in a cowboy hat. After the wedding, I gave Sebastian a frozen tear as a symbol of my love. I harvested key fruit and placed them in sea makers before harvesting gold bars in my furnace. I set up more sprinklers for my growing land of key fruit before heading to Ginger Island to give Leo a gift and dive into the volcano. I found a mummified bat and a journal scroll. No, the journal scroll fell in the- I passed out on floor 6. I started my morning with starfruit picking. After planting more seeds, I donated the mummified bat to Professor Snail, receiving another golden walnut. I chopped down all the island palm trees and wished Harvey a happy birthday at the island resort. I didn't have any coffee and I wasn't going to give him my triple shot espresso, so I ran away. At the forge, I used a ruby to finish my dwarf hammer upgrades and rode Willie's boat back to the fish shop. There, I bought seven crab pots to help me get closer to finishing my fish collections. At the Adventurer's Guild, I received a savage ring and a napalm ring from Gil before heading to the bus stop to harvest starfruit wine and place them in the shipping bin. I planted key beans and entered the mines. I slayed monsters and collected iron to smelt. Then I went to bed. It's keg day today. I crafted 17 using resources I had on the farm. Then I placed them at the bus stop. I decided today I would break my bank account. At Clint's I bought 400 iron ore and 125 coal. A dinosaur hatched to my coop. I named it Lizard after another one of my friends. I crafted and placed sprinklers before entering town. At the special orders board I accepted a quest from Gunther to collect 100 bone items. I bought 5 battery packs and garlic seeds in the night market and found a hidden pearl in the mermaid shell. I went to Forge instead of hanging out at the night market because I was broke for my merchant purchases. Then I passed out on the beach. It's day 100. This is where most people's challenges would end, but I'm still less than halfway to achieving my goal of 100% perfection. I harvested key fruit before giving my husband a gift. On Ginger Island, I planted the garlic seeds I bought last night and accepted a key quest to place four prismatic shards in his box. At the Volcano Forge, I combined my Savage and Napalm ranks because who doesn't love going fast while also exploding everything in sight? I gave Leo a mango and headed to the beach to winter forage. When the night market opened, I rode in the submarine to the bottom of the ocean to catch the midnight squid, blobfish, and spookfish. I warped home and went to bed, ending my first 100 days in the valley. It's time to sell all the winter forage I've been hoarding. I crafted monster musk, an iridium sprinkler, and explosive ammo. I accepted a quest from Clint to deliver an iron bar. I gave the wizard a birthday gift reaching 10 hearts with him. I used a secret room to warp to the railroad so I can collect oak resin. I used monster must before diving to floor 70 of the mines to slay skeletons for bone fragments. I collected 100 pieces easily and warped to the desert. In Skull Caverns, my good luck quickly came to an end as I got destroyed by a serpent just 10 floors deep. Harvey woke me up with a hospital bill. He claimed I lost my coal. I told him I knew exactly where it was, but he was too busy contacting a pilot that was flying nearby. In the mountains, Sebastian took me to a cliff overlooking Zuzu City. It was the most romantic thing anyone has ever done for me. He dropped me off at the quarry where I found a golden scythe. I harvested starfruit wine but wasn't able to make it home to sell. Today I had mail from Lewis telling me who my secret friend was for the Feast of the Winter Star. This was always my favorite part of any playthrough. Giving back to the community. Are you serious, Lewis? You were the one that sent me the letter. You can't ask the millionaire to be your secret friend. I sold starfruit wine in the shipping bin, then donated items to the museum and gave Clinton Iron Bar reaching 10 hearts with him. I worked to the desert to trade items and entered Skull Caverns. I completed my eradication goal for mummies and found prismatic shards, cowboy hats, and slime eggs. I found over 20 treasure floors today and made it to floor 139 before passing out. Overnight, I made 129,000 gold. 
my first day with over 100,000 gold earned. I had so much already more from yesterday, so I had to start making bars in my furnaces. I bought the coal from Marlin that I lost a few days ago before going to the saloon to buy 60 salads and 100 coffees. At Sandy's Oasis, I spent the rest of my money on starfruit seeds. And just like that, my bank account's empty again. I continued mining in Skull Caverns until I passed out on floor 67. Marlin sent me a letter. He gave me my coal back, which means I could smelt more iridium bars. I harvested key fruit before arriving at the desert. I traded for artifact trolls before giving Evelyn a gold beat for her birthday. On Ginger Island, my garlic had grown, so I went to the Gourmet Frog's cave to show him. He gave me five golden walnuts. In the walnut room, I placed four prismatic shards in the box and was awarded with 50 key gems. Now I had enough to buy a key to the town and four pressure nozzles. I headed into the volcano dungeon with the goal of collecting dragon teeth. I found four today, which was really good. I couldn't celebrate in my bed though, because I passed out on floor 9. I needed to continue my dungeon dive. So back I went to find golden walnuts and dragon teeth. Then I headed to the desert to give Sandy a crocus and reach 10 hearts with her. Staircase Sunday time. 27 jade for 27 staircases today. I cracked artifact troves at Clint's and donated minerals I found to the museum. I had lots of items to collect today. Starfruit wine, iridium bars, crops, and fruit trees. I then went to the dwarf to give them an amethyst. They reached max hearts today. In the mines, I destroyed boulders for stone and passed out. I woke up to a star drop from my husband. I collected key fruit, which tasted a lot better than the star drop. In the mines, it was back to boulder bashing and rock smashing before arriving at Clint's for more geode cracking. I donated a thunder egg and went back to the mines. I found two secret notes. Secret Note 10 told me about a hidden quest on floor 100 of Skull Caverns, and Secret Note 20 told me to follow the arrows to find the special charm. I sold starfruit wine and headed to bed. I started my morning by harvesting key fruit and entering my coop. My boy chicken was born, which I named Ketchup after another different one of my friends. Also, who doesn't love ketchup and eggs? I went to Jojo Mart to give the truck driver a rabbit's foot. In return, he gave me the special charm, which permanently increased my luck. I bought an auto petter from my barn at Jojo Mart and went to the mines. I slayed void spirits and collected fiber, which I used to craft tree fertilizer from my quarry. On the special orders board, Willie asked me to acquire 100 bug meat. I went to Ginger Island to accept another quest, He's Hungry Challenge. Reach level 100 of Skull Caverns without eating or drinking. I harvested starfruit but passed out before I could finish planting. Overnight, the witch cursed my coop. I finished planting starfruit and placed pressure nozzles on sprinklers. Lewis reminded me to get him a gift tomorrow. Yes, I remember Lewis. You don't have to remind me. I went back to the valley to collect a mussel from my crab pots. This was the last fish I needed to complete the Master Angler achievement. I harvested and shipped starfruit wine and bought 1,700 pieces of wood at Robin's. I used some of the wood to upgrade my barn and the rest to craft 38 kegs. I placed them at the bus stop and filled them all with starfruit. I placed the auto petter I bought yesterday in the barn and went to the mines to collect bug meat. I got a lot of resources but not a lot of sleep as I passed out while mining. Leo sent me the poi recipe in the mail today. I guess all those gifts were paying off. I ate a star drop from Willy for catching every fish. I harvested key fruit before arriving at the mines. Farming bug meat went extremely well as I found all 100 pieces in just a few hours. At the Feast of the Winter Star, I gave Lewis a gold quality hot pepper. Jody gave me pumpkin pie. Listen Jody, I'm sorry I forgot your birthday. I'm sure you hated making this gift for me. Back in the mines, I destroyed weeds for fiber which I used to craft tree fertilizer. I couldn't make it back to bed though. Gus sent me a letter to bring him an albacore. I collected oak resin from tappers and bought a duck feather from the traveling cart. I handed out gifts and purchased an iridium sprinkler from Krobus. At the saloon, I gave Gus the albacore he requested. A summer spangle for Caroline Max for friendship. I went to Clint's to crack geodes and not wish him a happy birthday. At the oasis, I bought starfruit seeds before heading to the beach to place 100 bug meat in Willie's bin. I had plenty of starfruit to plant on the island as well as the greenhouse. Back on the island, the dungeon was calling for me to explore. I found two dragon teeth and slayed plenty of magma sprites. I passed out on floor 6. I had more starfruit to harvest today. I introduced myself to Birdie. It's about time I stopped ignoring her. She asked me to find a pirate's locket and gave me a war memento. Back at the beach, Willie showed me a giant pile of bug meat he was using as bait. The fish seemed to love it. On the help one aboard, Jody requested a gold bar. She would not leave me alone about her missed birthday. I harvested and shipped 600 key fruit. I can finally put an end to my key fruit farm. I crafted a preserve jar before stopping my Marnies to buy two goats. Goat milk and greatest. I handed Jody a gold bar and a diamond. Then it was time to head down to the depths of Skull Caverns. I passed out on floor 24 after collecting a handful of resources. And just like that, winter is almost over. I learned my last recipe of the year, cranberry candy from the Queen of Sauce. 
I crafted 125 explosive ammo and harvested starfruit wine at the bus stop. I bought grass starters at Pierre's before making him pay me 144,000 gold for my wine. It was time for a shopping spree. I bought 3,000 wood, 1,000 stone, 525 coal, 200 copper ore, and 20 iron ore. I traded for staircases in the desert before entering Skull Caverns for the final time this year. I found an iridium sprinkler and a prismatic shard on my way to floor 100. Upon reaching the floor, I was greeted by Mr. Q who gave me 25 key gems for not eating or drinking while in the mines. He also made me drink iridium snake milk to permanently increase my health. I crafted a cheese press and smelted iridium bars. I saved resources for obelisks in a chest and planted grass starters all over the farm. I went to give Krobus a gift but passed out on my way there as my year came to a close. Happy New Year Sebastian, Spring is finally here. I walked outside and was greeted by a mysterious man. He introduced himself as Kent, Jody's husband. He said he was off at war and just returned to live in the valley. I made iridium bars before reading my mail. Robin and Clint sent me notices that the prices increased. Good thing I bought all my resources yesterday. I tilled the land to get the soil ready for spring crops. My grass starters worked like a charm. Grass was everywhere. I sliced as much as I could and went straight to Pierre's store. There I bought all the cooking ingredients I needed such as wheat flour, sugar, vinegar, oil, and rice. I also bought 400 potato seeds before heading to One Willow Lane. Since Kent mentioned he was in a war, I showed him the war memento hoping he would know what to do with it. He told me he knew the man in the picture and gave me gourmet tomato salt as a gift. I gave Jody a diamond. She mentioned Pierre gave her a better gift the other day. A fresh blueberry. Hey, didn't I sell Pierre my fruit? Since when was he a farmer? Then I walked to the saloon. Maybe Gus would know what to do with this tomato salt. He told me this is exactly what he needed for a recipe. He offered to trade me a rose which I knew would be the perfect gift for a nature appreciating woman. Emily, you're a fan of the outside air, right? She told me that she wasn't interested but told me that her best friend Sandy might be. I told Pam to drive me to the desert so I could give my rose to Sandy. She loved it and in return she gave me a TV remote. I really needed this for myself but I guess George could use it as well. He was beyond excited to access another channel and handed me an arctic shard he found in his old mining days. I went straight to the man who seems like he might be interested. The wizard. I was hoping he would put a magic spell on it and hand it back to me all shiny and new but instead he grabbed it out of my hands and dropped a worm in my lap. I'm going to hold on to this for now since I have to plant my crops. I should have started planting sooner because I passed out before I could plant every seed. My pickles were done this morning so I placed them in the shipping bin before placing a strawberry in the jar. I finished planting my potatoes and gave gifts around town. On the special orders board, Demetrius requested that I caught 10 sunfish. Hopefully this would be easier than catching lingcod. Speaking of fish, I still have this worm lying around. I gave it to Willie hoping he would need it and he told me this was exactly what he was looking for. He handed me a pirate's locket which was the item that Birdie asked me for. I can't believe I found it. I asked if he could take me straight to the island. He agreed and I set sail to give Bertie her husband's locket. She handed me 5 golden walnuts in exchange. I harvested honey before entering Key's walnut room. I accepted the Key's cuisine quest to ship freshly cooked items equivalent to 100,000 gold. At the shop I bought Pierre's missing sock list and a few recipes. Leo and I had a nice conversation before I entered the volcano dungeon. At the dwarf shop I bought the island warp totem recipe. Then I hit the hay. Or you could say hit the rocks because I passed out in the mines. The first thing I needed to do this morning was spend some of my golden walnuts. I purchased the island trader upgrade. I then traded in resources for the deluxe retaining soil and banana pudding recipes. I then went to the volcano to buy the bridge upgrade. I answered to finish off my magma sprite slider goal before heading to the saloon. Upon arrival I purchased more coffee. I then accepted a help wanted quest from Kent. He wanted one anchovy. I collected tons of wine to add more starfruit to my kegs before heading to Clint's to crack more artifact groves. I only had a few items left to donate to the museum. One of the items I needed was an ornamental fan which I found and placed in my museum collection. I fished at the river for sunfish and the ocean for anchovy before heading up to the quarry to chop down trees. At the railroad I grabbed oak resin before passing out, but I didn't lose much money because my wine sold for over 240,000 gold overnight. I had some errands to run today. I first had to visit my cows and remembered I forgot to feed them yesterday. Whoops. I gave Pierre his missing stock list and handed Kent a birthday pearl. I also gave him the anchovy as for yesterday. I arrived at the river with my iridium rod so I can catch more sunfish. I went to the carpenter shop to build a fish pond. Robin told me she missed Sebastian but I told her that he was in good hands. I walked to the adventurer's guild to talk to Marlin. He told me I completed every single monster eradication goal. He told me to speak to Gil to gain my prize. Gil gave me Marlin's phone number and promised if I ever lost anything I could just call Marlin and ask him to get it for me. I then warped to the desert to spend the fortune I made last night at Sandy's. 470 starfruit seeds later I was back on my way home. I organized more items for cooking and crafting before I collected and shipped jelly. I crafted and placed more kegs and stopped by the sewers to buy a wicked statue in the crystal floor recipe. 
Back on the farm, I used iron bars and made to craft 22 kegs. Then I slept for the night. Good morning, hubby. Here's your daily frozen tier. Kiss me first. Then we reached 14 hearts with each other. I gave Lorne a diamond who also reached max friendship. At the traveling car, I bought a rare seed before heading to the secret woods to harvest some morale. I crafted and placed kegs at the bus stop. After starfruit stuffing them, I arrived at Pierre's to buy the rest of the seeds I needed for recipes. Then I crafted explosive ammo and went to the mines to farm iron. I passed out on my way back home. I started day 118 with some harvesting. Garlic and gold bars were both finished. I placed a sturgeon in my fish pond so I could start producing caviar. I milked my goats and placed goat milk in my cheese press. I planted my empty farm before riding the minecarts to Clint to crack more geodes. I donated granite to Gunther and was given magic rock candy for donating my 90th item. In the mines I farmed for frozen geodes and found secret note 22 which told me to find a secret in the tunnel. I would rather crack more geodes. One of the geodes contained marble which I needed from the museum. Back in the mines I farmed more geodes and went to sleep. My sturgeon produced row today which means I just had to put it in the preserve jar and wait. I swapped out my sturgeon pond for a blobfish pond and went to pet my animals. I collected goat cheese before grabbing armfuls of wine from the bus stop. I dumped both in the shipping bin before talking to Evelyn. After we reached 10 hearts with each other I made my way to the desert to trade for staircases. Then I dove into skull caverns. Today was the best day I've had in a while. There were prismatic shards and iridium everywhere. I warped home to smell iridium bars before I went to bed. It's crop time. I scythed kale and picked over 600 potatoes. I then collected iridium bars and started making gold bars. At the general store I sold my 600 potatoes and bought over 300 parsnips. On the special orders bar I accepted Gus's egg challenge. He needed 24 for his famous omelette. I went to the museum to donate a prismatic shard and planted parsnips on my farm. In the mines I farmed more frozen geodes and arrived at my favorite blacksmith. He cracked the geodes for me and I found kyanite and celestine putting me just one artifact away from finishing the museum. I went to Ginger Island to harvest and plant starfruit and went back to the mainland to nap for the night. My blobfish had a treat for me this morning, fresh fro to sell in the shipping bin. I collected two dozen eggs from my coop and went to visit Pierre on my way to the saloon. Him and I reached Max's friendship but I still felt that this was a one-sided relationship. I placed the eggs in Gus's fridge and completed the quest. I went to 24 Mountain Lane to upgrade my barn to Deluxe. In the secret woods I chopped hardwood. I then crafted a monster musk which I used in the mines on floor 50. I had a few more resources I needed to collect for crafting. Then I lay down for the night. Gus thanked me for delivering the eggs of the mini fridge. I harvested wine at the bus stop on the way to Vincent's house to give him a birthday present. I finally got this kid to like me. I celebrated by heading to the saloon to eat the giant omelette Gus made using my eggs. I also bought some coffee, 185 cups to be exact. I turned it into triple shot espresso before arriving at the desert. After gathering some omni geodes and skull caverns, I exchanged them at the desert trader for artifact troves. I smelted quartz, copper, and iron in furnaces before shipping resources and going to bed. The profits were starting to roll in. My caviar was finally finished in the preserve jar. I collected and shipped it before gathering resources from the furnaces. At Clint's I cracked artifact troves and found the arrowhead. I gave Gunther my last artifact and earned my final star drop. At the ranch I bought 5 pigs, Eppa, Orky, Piglet, Crispy, and Wilbur. I harvested potatoes on the farm and planted red cabbage and ancient fruit in my greenhouse. I bought 1,666 wheat flour at Pierre so I could tackle the Keys Cuisine quest I've been ignoring the entire season. I turned all my wheat flour into bread in the kitchen. I placed all of it in the shipping bin before chopping hardwood. I gathered oak resin from the railroad and chopped trees in the quarry before arriving at the mines to collect iron. I passed out while in the depths. My bad math caused me to be 40 gold short of completing Keys Cuisine quest. I sold one fresh triple shot espresso first thing in the morning. This should put me over 100,000 gold worth of sold cooking items. I harvested more potatoes and parsnips, then went to the secret woods to chop more hardwood. I crafted an oil maker and placed it in the barn before crafting kegs to place the bus stop. I collected wine before arriving at the mines to farm for more iron. I went to sleep and completed the Keys Cuisine quest overnight. Day 125 started with smelting copper and crafting kegs. I placed hundreds of speed grow on my farm as I prepared to spend a fortune later today. I placed down the kegs I crafted earlier before heading to the egg festival. I bought 400 strawberry seeds before destroying everyone in the egg hunt. How many eggs do you have in your basket, Abigail? Back on the farm, I planted all my strawberries before heading to bed. In the coop, I collected a gold quality duck feather and placed it in my birthday chest. I also collected goat milk before harvesting wine at the bus stop. I went to the oasis and bought more starfruit seeds because I needed to earn at least 15 million gold in the next three seasons. I gave Leo a mango on the island and harvested my starfruit. In the walnut room, I bought 8 pressure nozzles and placed them on sprinklers. Then I passed out while organizing my farm. I finished organizing my farm this morning. I accepted the Danger in the Deep key quest before handing Leo a gift and heading back to the valley. Alex was there and he needed a friend to sit with him as he was reminded of his mother who passed away when he was a child. 
After we talked, he felt a lot better, so I went back to continuing my chores. Robin asked me to collect 1,000 wood at the special orders board. I harvested crops in my greenhouse and made my way to the mines. I began fighting in the dangerous mines and arrived at floor 15 collecting radioactive ore in the process. I ran home but didn't quite make it to bed before passing out. My farm was a mess. I haven't really been here much lately. I decided today I would completely reorganize my land before going to Cinderset Forest to complete Robin's resource rush. I collected starfruit wine to place more acorns at the railroad. I dug down five more floors in the mines before going back to the farm to sell wine and sleep. Robin sent me the recipe for the stone chest in the mail. I had more items to sell for a full shipment before going back to the mines to try to complete all 120 floors. I ended up completing 50 more floors today and reached floor 70 before going to the bus stop to collect and sell wine. I went to Ginger Island and slept for the night. I started my morning by collecting fairy rose honey before heading back to the valley. I went to the mines to look for an item I needed badly. In order to reach perfection I needed a rainbow shell for a quest. Slight problem. Almost 100 days ago, all the way back in summer I sold my rainbow shells. All of them. So the only chance I had of getting a rainbow shell was in the dangerous mines. I looked for it for hours and never found it. I went to sleep defeated. On the island an artifact spot finally appeared. I got extremely lucky and it dropped a snake vertebrae. I went to the mines to reach floor 120 and collect 50 key gems. I bought a sprinkler from Krobus before heading to Kent and Jody's to enjoy some popcorn. Kent did not enjoy it as much as I did. I gave a diamond to Jody because I was still trying to reach 10 hearts with her. I boated to the island so I could fight in the volcano. More like fall over. I got smacked by a tiger slime and exploded into a billion pieces of cinder shards. Willie told me I dropped 7 items in the volcano including my starfruit and an iridium sprinkler. I sprinted to the adventurers guild to tell Marlin, please give me my starfruit. I'm a poor boy with only like 26 friends and a hot husband. I gathered oak resin before going to the saloon to buy coffee. At the bus stop I collected wine and went back to the island to sleep. In the mail Marlin sent me the starfruit that I lost. I can't believe he fell from my trap. While shopping trees I found Journal Scrap Town which was the location of a hidden spot just north of the island field office. I went right there to find a golden walnut and an ostrich egg. I gathered resources in the volcano dungeon before going to the bus stop to gather wine. I also had a handful of battery packs and hundreds of strawberries to collect. I crafted and placed kegs before hitting the hay. My goats finally produced large goat milk today. I had less than 5 items that I still needed to ship. I harvested crops in my greenhouse and crafted a ton of bee houses. I collected my first two truffles and put one in the oil maker before selling the other. I gathered hardwood and went back to the barn to pick up and sell truffle oil. On Ginger Island I gave Leo a mango and headed to Island West. There I harvested starfruit and planted seeds before placing bee houses. I chopped down trees at the quarry and went to Ginger Island to sleep. I passed out on the docks before I could get to my bed. At the Walnut Room quest board I accepted the Skull Caverns Evasion quest turning the normal Skull Caverns into a nightmare. I also bought the hopper recipe using some gems I had collected. I gave Leo another mango and he told me he wanted to go to the valley with me. At the special orders board Linus asked me to fish up 20 pieces of trash. I went to the desert to buy 600 starfruit seeds before heading to the mines. I had a trick up my sleeve. I went to floor 100 to fish for trash floating in the lava. I caught all 20 pieces in just a few hours. I placed all the garbage I found in the recycling bin at the railroad. In the mines I collected copper so I could craft more tappers. I passed out on the island and a treehouse was built by parrots in the night. Linus taught me how to craft fiber seeds in the mail. I collected ancient fruit in my greenhouse and wine at the bus stop. In the mines I looked for an ancient seed for a crafting recipe. Unfortunately I couldn't find one today and ended up passing out on floor 27. I began my morning by harvesting hundreds of strawberries. I sold them in the shipping bin along with the wine that I collected yesterday. In the mines I collected bat wings before heading to the flower dance. I asked Sebastian to dance with me. He wasn't too excited but I know how much he actually loves me and agreed to dance because he just really loves me. Like so much. Right Sebastian? After a romantic dance I collected more starfruit wine before heading back to the mines. I need to get back to Ginger Island to look for another snake vertebrae. I forgot that Willie's shop is closed on festival days so I couldn't make it to the island in time. I passed out in town but I made 400,000 gold so passing out can't affect me when I'm making all this bank. I finally had enough money to buy the island obelisk to the wizards. I placed tappers on trees and gave Jody a rabbit's foot. I traded for magic rock candy at the desert and went back to the mines to find an ancient seed. Still no luck today. I warped to the island before passing out. The artifact spot I needed finally spawned. I found another snake vertebrae and completed the island field office. Professor Snail thanked me for finishing the collection with 3 golden walnuts. At last I got my hands on all 130 walnuts. He also taught me the ostrich incubator recipe. I went home to craft and place one. I tossed my ostrich egg in the incubator before going to the mines and continue looking for an ancient seed. Instead I stumbled across... Oh. <laughs> 
was, it was bound to happen eventually. I found the living hat. Stardew's rarest hat. A 1 in 100,000 chance. I had to say goodbye to my cowboy hat. I also found the ancient seed. I collected starfruit wine and hardwood before entering my bed for a good night's rest. I started day 139 with some farm chores, aka collecting wine at the bus stop. It was a very good luck day, so I warped to the desert to invade Skull Caverns. I battled my way through floors, destroying giant serpents and finding iridium ore. I kept digging until I reached floor 100. I completed Key's quest and was rewarded with 40 key gems. I warped home to collect oak resin on my farm before going to bed. My last harvest of strawberries was ready along with more ancient fruit. I crafted 50 tree fertilizers and used them on mahogany seeds. I chopped hardwood before going to the desert to trade for staircases. I gave gifts to both Kent and Jody before planting acorns at the railroad. 23 oak resin was ready in tappers so I used it to craft kegs and place them at the bus stop. On the island I gave Leo a duck feather and gathered more starfruit. I passed out while planting. I think I'm having deja vu. Summer first started with accepting the rock rejuvenation quest on the special orders board. I used a scythe to clear all my dead strawberries and prepared the ground for my summer crops. I went to the desert to buy over 1,000 starfruit seeds. I planted the seeds on both the mainland and the island. It was officially money season. I accepted the Skull Caverns invasion quest in Key's Walnut Room before buying pressure nozzles to place on the island. Then I passed out. What a great way to start summer. I used my axe on every tree I could see before heading to Robins to upgrade my house. I crafted iridium sprinklers for my farm and planted starfruit. Then I went to bed. Such a productive day. I made iridium bars before collecting over 100 starfruit wine at the bus stop. I arrived at the desert ready to tackle the dangerous mines. I fought my way to floor 100 and received 40 key gems. I went back home to harvest and sell iridium bars before taking a power nap. I haven't handed out gifts in a while. I decided today was the day to do that. I completed rock rejuvenation by giving Emily a- He thought my amethyst was from Clint, so I was forced to go back home to grab another amethyst for Emily. I gave Jas a gold berry rose and reached 10 hearts. I collected oak resin and crafted kegs before placing them in the tunnel. I farmed resources in the mines and went to sleep. Overnight, my mansion became an even bigger mansion and I was given the living large achievement. I collected and smelted bars before reading my mail. Leo taught me the mango sticky rice recipe. I crafted kegs and tappers and went to the railroad to collect oak resin that was ready. I then placed tappers on any empty trees. I went to tell Robin that my house wasn't big enough and that I needed a bigger upgrade. I gathered starfruit wine and placed the kegs I crafted this morning. I planted pine cones and passed out. I spent the entirety of my day chopping trees collecting thousands of wood. I sold the wine I gathered last night and went to bed. I jolted from my bed quickly placing hay into a silo for my animals. All this productivity during the season has caused me to completely neglect them. I stopped by One Willow Lane to give Jody a diamond. Jody and I officially hit 10 hearts. I can't believe I've left this hot mom in the dust for so long. Oh, you're here too, Ken. Uh, here's a rabbit's foot, I guess. Pretend you didn't hear that and I'll just be on my way. To Ginger Island. I went into Leo's hut to give him a gift. I don't know where he is. Yeah, I don't know how I missed that. I don't want to talk about it. I harvested starfruit, planted more seeds, and made my way back to the jungle to find Leo. I gave him a mango before going to the desert to buy more starfruit. I took the bus back to the train station where I collected oak resin and crafted kegs to place the bus stop. I bought coffee at the saloon, brewed them into triple shot espresso, and slept in the island farmhouse. I woke up and accepted another Skull Caverns invasion quest because I haven't suffered enough yet. I headed back to my barn to check on my animals. An ostrich hatched today, which I named Popeyes. Sorry, I guess I was kinda hungry. I made ancient fruit jelly in my preserve jar before going to the special orders board to accept island ingredients. Caroline needed me to harvest and ship 100 ginger. I went to Ginger Island to look for... Well... Ginger. I checked the wilderness and the volcano. I chopped trees and went to sleep. I used resources to craft 14 cheese presses and placed them in my barn. I also added oil makers and mayo makers to my animal pens. My artisan goods were going to carry this run. I walked to the mines to collect copper and grabbed a handful of wine on my way back home. I sold my goods and sold my soul. To my pillow. The morning of day 150 started with greenhouse gathering. I took Willie's boat to the island to find more ginger. I warped to the desert to begin my dive into Skull Caverns. I found resources, slayed monsters, and made my way to floor 100 to receive key gems. Now it's time to rest in my bed. I collected ancient fruit jelly and dropped it in the shipping bin. I went to Ginger Island to chop trees and gather ginger. I bought 20 pressure nozzles in the walnut room before heading to the luau. I put gold quality starfruit into the pot. If I was going to have to taste starfruit all the time, everybody else would have to as well. Back on the farm, I placed pressure nozzles on sprinklers and planted more starfruit. I wasn't paying attention to the time and passed out on my farm. Ken taught me the super meal recipe this morning. 
I took my blobfish out of the pond and replaced it with lava eel. I collected wine and oak resin before chopping trees. Then I spent the rest of my day harvesting crops in the greenhouse and smelting iron bars. I ended my night after crafting 20 kegs and sold my wine for over 500,000 gold today. Amazing. I had more kegs to craft today. I placed them in the tunnel and filled them with my favorite yellow fruit. I went to the beach hoping I could find a rainbow shell, but no luck. I went to the wizards to purchase a water obelisk. I made artisan goods in my barn and coop before heading to Kent's to give him a gift on my way to the island. There I tended my crops. I rearranged my sprinklers for an even more efficient setup and collected ginger around the island. I went back to the valley to sleep. I watched an episode of the Queen of Sauce before going outside to collect battery packs and crops. I warped to the beach using my brand new obelisk and found the rainbow shell I needed. This was the best day of my life. After heading home to collect cheese and truffle oil, I arrived at Ginger Island. I did my island chores and went back home to scythe hay for my animals. I crafted sprinklers and used pressure nozzles to increase their range. I placed cheese in my cellar to start aging it before laying down for the night. Ken sent me a letter in the mail. He asked if he can give Jody one of my starfruit as an anniversary gift. Good thing I had a few thousand lying around. I also had some to harvest before going to the mountains. While I was there, Sebastian needed my help saving an injured frog. I picked him up and adopted the little guy as our new son. The family was complete. I gathered oak resin before giving Kent a rabbit's foot and starfruit. He told me to not let Jody see. He should have told me that sooner because I gave him the starfruit while he was standing next to her. I collected starfruit wine before placing a battery pack in the tunnel. The note told me to bring a rainbow shell to the train station. Thank goodness I found one yesterday. I went straight to the railroad with my rainbow shell in hand and placed it in the box. A note fell down from the rafters that told me to put 10 beets in Lewis's fridge. First, I had to collect more wine. I also accepted the tropical fish quest from Willie at the special orders board. After that, I headed to the manor to place 10 beets in Lewis's fridge. The note told me to give the sand dragon his final meal. Then I gave Leo a duck feather in his treehouse. We're not on the island. You're lying! I went to the desert to place a solar essence in the sand dragon's mouth and found a letter that told me to check the wood pile back at home. I arrived back on the farm and looked at the wood. Up between the logs, I saw the club card, which I grabbed and stuffed in my wallet. I placed iridium sprinklers and pressure nozzles before planting crops. I passed out while on the farm. I woke up to a strange smell. Sebastian had built a sanctuary overnight for our frog son. I saw Popeyes the ostrich walking outside, so I knew she laid an egg in the barn. I placed it in the shipping bin. I had officially shipped every item I needed, completing full shipment. I harvested ancient fruit in my greenhouse and wine at the bus stop. I went to the desert to give the bouncer my club card and told him to get lost. That's right, step outside, blockhead! Bang! Inside, I played the slots machine to win key coins before buying the rare crow and a top hat. I went to the mines to farm for iron before hitting the sack. My lava eel pond produced row this morning. In return, I gave him fire cords to expand the pond. I collected iron bars and planted mahogany trees. I went to the wizard's tower to buy the desert obelisk. Then I crafted and placed kegs before riding the minecarts to the quarry to plant pine cones. I smelted copper ore before wrapping up my night. I needed to collect a lot of items today. Battery packs? Copper bars, and mayonnaise. At the desert trader, I gave her rubies and prismatic shards in exchange for spicy eels and magic rock candy. I visited Sandy and bought 1,000 deluxe speed grow and 400 starfruit seeds. I went to the island to harvest ginger in the ground and in the volcano dungeon. I worked home to smelt resources and harvested fruit trees in the greenhouse. Then I went to bed. I started day 159 by placing cheese in my cellar. I collected starfruit wine as part of my keg day ritual. I gave Ken a rabbit's foot before seeing a help wanted request from him to deliver seaweed. Couldn't you have asked me in person? Anyway, here you go, buddy. And just like that, we reached 10 hearts. I placed starfruit wine in my shipping bin before using my obelisk to teleport to the island. I harvested ginger and went to the volcano dungeon to collect more there. I passed out in the volcano dungeon, but I wasn't going to lose any money because I made 500,000 gold overnight. I began my day by warping home to chop trees. I collected fruit from my cave before asking Rasmodius to build me my final obelisk. I used his secret room to warp to the railroad where I collected oak resin. I farmed iron in the mines before walking to the farm to smelt ores. Then I laid down for the night. I walked into my cellar first thing in the morning and grabbed all my aged cheese. I then had some important mail to read. Lewis, what the frick? Apparently he needed oil to grease up something. I don't even want to ask why. I fed my animals and crafted kegs. Since I ran out of room at the bus stop and tunnel, I was going to need a place to put them. Aha! The desert. I worked there to place down my kegs and traded for staircases. I went to Ginger Island to collect starfruit. I planted more and added deluxe speed growth to the entire farm. I used my hoe and some ginger before farming for more in the volcano. As I laid in bed, I hoped Lewis wasn't dreaming that he had my oil. I started day 162 by going straight back to the volcano. There, I found my 100th piece of ginger. All these dungeon runs were worth it for this. I shipped all 100 pieces before going to farm copper in the mines. 
In the night, one of my pigs gave birth, which I named Miss Piggy. I read my mail as soon as I woke up today. Caroline congratulated me on completing the island ingredients quest by teaching me the solar panel recipe. I then did my usual Tuesday chores, shopping trees, gathering oak resin, and crafting cakes. I collected wine at the bus stop and tunnel before warping to the desert to place cakes. I went back to the mines to collect more iron ore before sleeping. Being rich sure is tiring. I woke up bright and early and ran straight to the Adventurers Guild. Marlin said he didn't open till 2 but I had my own key and I let myself in to buy explosive ammo. I ate magic rock candy before entering Skull Caverns. I found tons of prismatic shards and hundreds of viridium before passing out on floor 173. I made iridium bars this morning before warping to the island to tend to my farm. I then went home to collect and make more iridium bars. At the oasis I bought starfruit seeds and speedgrow. I had hundreds of wine ready to be collected. I also dropped trees in the quarry and on the island. I then went to sleep in the island farmhouse. Today was Leo's birthday. I missed it last year, thanks to the weather, so I was determined to get him a great gift this year. I gave him a gold quality duck feather and reached 10 hearts. I had done it. I befriended every villager. At first I didn't fit in, but this was my new family. This gave me a moment to think about how far I've come and how much I cared about making the valley a better place. Well, everywhere except the bus stop, which was my mini factory. I harvested and planted starfruit before going to the mines. I farmed copper before heading home. When I got home, Sebastian asked me if I wanted to adopt a human son to go with our frog son. I told him absolutely. I couldn't wait to be a dad and raise a family with my dark-haired prince. Today was another busy day. I harvested starfruit and went straight to the mountains to talk to Lee. This is one of my favorite cutscenes in the entire game. It gave me a minute to look back on how proud I was of that mysterious boy on the island. From losing his parents in a storm to learning life from Linus and going to school with Vincent and Jazz, it truly made me happy for Leo. He was truly my favorite thing. Then I placed tree fertilizer on trees at the railroad and added more tappers to my ever-growing resin factory. I also needed to collect oak resin before going to Cindersap Forest to destroy nature. I can't believe Lewis allows me to come here weekly to demolish the valley for my cakes. I had to farm iron before going to bed. I learned the last recipe of the season, roasted hazelnuts before harvesting starfruit. I worked to the mines and used monster musk. The end of the season is always complete chaos. The summer's chaos was an army of dust sprites. I also needed to collect starfruit wine in the desert and added more cakes to my collection. I traded for staircases and chopped down trees before heading to the beach to watch the dance of the moonlight jellies. It was a great way to end the most profitable season in the valley. The change in season meant my farm was a mess. I spent the entire morning fixing up the till spots before going to Pierre's. There I bought 1000 cranberry seeds. Cranberries were the best thing I could buy for this challenge because my kegs were preoccupied with starfruit. Cranberries also regrow so once I plant them today I won't need to plant anything else for the rest of the season. I placed speed grow everywhere but unfortunately I couldn't plant all the seeds I bought today. I finished planting this morning and realized that 1000 seeds wasn't enough. I went back to the general store to buy more and planted those. I collected wine before heading to the mines. After finding hundreds of fiber on floor 81, I crafted tree fertilizer to place at the quarry. I went home to sell my wine and sleep. I had a lot of tasks on my to-do list today. The first was on Ginger Island. I need to gather and plant more starfruit. Then I went to the mines to farm for coal using monster musk. I also picked up iron to smelt before walking to the saloon. There I bought over 600 cups of coffee. I fed my insane caffeine addiction by brewing 200 triple shot espresso. I went to the railroad to harvest oak resin from my trees and ran back home to make iron bars. Today was a long day so I needed rest to prepare for tomorrow. My lava eels asked for another treat this morning. In order to expand the pond they needed two diamonds. I tossed the sharp rocks they requested in the water. I went to the forest to smack my axe into trees for wood before crafting kegs. In the desert I traded prismatics for magic rock candy. I also collected my desert wine to refill the kegs. I placed all the wine I gathered in the shipping bin before upgrading my axe using gold bars. Hey Clint, haven't talked to you in a while. Next I began the most difficult part of perfection, craft every item. I dove into my resources chest to build every item I had learned thus far. I moved all the completed items inside to keep as a memento. Then I warped to the island to gather honey for my bees. I went back to the farm to tend to my greenhouse before going to the mines to farm for iron. I passed out while down there. This morning I was feeling like a legend. I made my first 10 million earnings on the farm. I went back to the mines to continue collecting resources. I spent the entire day there. Some days were simple. Back to bed, I guess. Clint called me first thing in the morning to tell me my axe had finally upgraded. I arrived at the blacksmith and picked up my shiny gold tree destructor. I decided to test it out on trees in the quarry. I then walked to the railroad to collect oak resin before going back to the farm. 
I placed iron in my furnaces and cleared my entire farm while waiting for them to finish cooking. I then crafted more kegs. I had made over 500 at this point. I planted more pine cones because I felt like I owed Mother Nature for the amount of wood I stole from her. I passed out in town and was carried home. Today was a me day. I watched the TV for the newest recipe and played Junimo Kart. It was nice to have a relaxing morning for the first time in what felt like seasons. Then I was back to the grind collecting thousands of cranberries before going to the desert to celebrate keg day by collecting wine and adding 44 more kegs to my setup. I acquired staircases from the trader before returning home to take care of my animals. I then went to Ginger Island to harvest starfruit before going to the forest to combine my glowstone ring and iridium band. I passed out before I could get back in bed. I started day 176 by using my key to unlock the blacksmith so Clint could make my axe iridium. He told me it would be a few days. I rode the minecarts to the mines to collect copper and iron. Returning home I used the ores I gathered in furnaces. I then laid in bed. Every time I go mining my day seems to fly by. I woke up to iron bars being ready for me to grab. I went to the bus stop to collect starfruit wine before asking Sandy for more seeds. I harvested fruit in my back cave before gathering artisan goods from my barn and coop. I then mined for copper before heading to sleep. My iridium axe was finally ready so I went to the blacksmith to put it in my inventory before arriving at the quarry to demolish every tree in sight. I gathered resin at the train station and went home. It was time. Time to become a chef. I've been learning recipes every week but I've only ever made bread and triple shot espresso. The lack of cooking experience didn't affect me as I was a wizard in the kitchen. I cooked 5 dishes, 10 dishes, then 25 dishes earning myself the sous chef achievement. It was like I'd been cooking my entire life. After using every plate in my house for food I went back to doing something I was more familiar with. Crafting kegs and harvesting crops. Then I went to bed. I decided to watch some television today. I turned on living off the land for my weekly tip. Hey Sebastian, how'd I get married again? He stared blankly at the food covered stove. He was over my jokes. I went to Marnie's ranch for the first time in a while. There Shane bought new shoes for Jazz and showed me his collection of blue chickens. I don't think Shane and I have talked in over a year so I'm surprised he was so willing to let me into his life. I'm glad he was doing well. I then told Marnie to hand over the hay. 975 pieces to be exact. I needed food for my animals. I then went to the bus stop at Tunnel to grab wine before collecting more in the desert. I placed more kegs and came home to sell my profits in the shipping bin. I bought salad at the saloon and went to the mines to farm copper ores before sleeping. I had plenty of red berries to gather this morning. I then arrived on floor 81 to collect fiber for tree fertilizer. I placed it on trees at the quarry and went home to sleep. Before I could fully close my eyes I heard a loud knock on the door. The adoption agency came with our new son. I woke Sebastian up to tell him the good news. Honey, what should we name him? I need to take my motorcycle to the car wash tomorrow. That was the perfect name. Car wash. I must have yelled the name at the man because he wrote car wash in all capital letters on the birth certificate. Then I went back to bed with a smile. Sebastian and I had a nice conversation to start the day. He told me when he was older, car wash could join him on a bike ride. I love Sebastian, but sometimes he's just a little too obsessed with his motorcycle. I collected items for my greenhouse before planting trees in the backwoods. I then harvested oak resin at the railroad before going to the mines to collect more fiber to make more tree fertilizer for my quarry forest. I passed out at the bus stop on my way home. I spent the morning destroying more trees. It's fine, I deserve this since I planted pine cones yesterday. I used the wood I gathered to craft more kegs to place in the desert. I collected wine while I was there along with trading for staircases. I went to the ice floors in the mines to pick up iron before going home to smelt my ores and sell my goods. I cooked three dishes in the kitchen before going to sleep. I had so many gems in my chest I decided it was time to give them to someone who needed them. For a price of course. I'm not letting Clint get away with taking these for free. I clearly needed the money so I could buy coal. I went back to the farm to make radioactive bars before going to the quarry to ask the tree some questions. I then went to the bus stop factory to collect wine. Then I went to Ginger Island to chop trees and sleep. Overnight one of the pigs gave birth to a piggy which I named Babe. I harvested battery packs today before opening up my grain display chest. I grabbed the most valuable items I could get my hands on and headed into town. I beat Pierre last year but today it was time to humiliate him. I won the grain display with ease scoring 113 points. I enjoyed the fair games and ate survival burgers with Gus. I love that during festivals time is paused. It gives me time to take a look at the scenery and catch up with the familiar town faces. I headed back home to make mayo and truffle oil before gathering aged goods from my cellar. I crafted kegs and warped to the desert to place them before passing out. It was harvest day today. I gathered cranberries from my farm. Then in the greenhouse I picked up ancient fruit and shook my trees for my year round fruits. I used my obelisk to arrive on Ginger Island. I walked to Island West where I harvested starfruit. 
I also tore down all my sprinklers to make an even more efficient setup with iridium sprinklers and pressure nozzles. This was the final time I would adjust my island farm. I then headed to sleep in the farmhouse. I spent the morning planting star fruit in the island before warping home. I made artisan goods and collected wine at the bus stop and tunnel. I rode minecarts to the quarry to chop down trees, then picked up oak resin at the train station. I crafted a few kegs before playing Junimo Kart. After embracing my inner apple, I went to bed. My lava eels had an odd request this morning. Two mega bombs. I used all mine in Skull Cavern, so I had to go visit the dwarf to buy some more. Then I threw the bombs in the water before heading back to the mines to collect copper. I stopped by Clint's to buy 425 iron ore and 155 copper ore. I was trying to limit how much I spent on resources because I had a big purchase in the near future. I went to the mines for the third time today to farm fiber. I crafted tree fertilizer to place on pine cones at the quarry. I went home to smell ores and passed out. Maybe if I was just a bit more efficient, this wouldn't have happened. Day 188 began with cake crafting and harvesting oak resin. Leo asked me if I thought that Jazz liked him. I told him to shoot a shot. You know how I said I was limiting my spending yesterday? Well, today I spent a ton of money on coal and wood. It was worth it for the 80 kegs I crafted, though. I worked to the desert to dump more money in Sandy's lap for starfruit seeds. I also crafted stone flooring to place between my kegs. This is what expert level decorating looks like. I added more kegs to my collection before going to the farm to sleep. I went back to the desert to harvest over 250 starfruit wine. This is what my empire was built on. I headed to the mines to buy bombs before arriving back in the desert. It was time. To Skull Caverns! The combination of magic rock candy, triple shot espresso, my rings, and explosive ammo was perfect. I breezed through floors like it was nothing, collecting resources on every level. I found tons of treasure floors and gems as I traversed down to floor 200. I worked home to make iridium bars. I passed out, but it was all worth it for the profits I made. Today was another berry harvesting day. I collected iridium bars in my furnace and went to the island. In the walnut room, I accepted the special quest Danger in the Deep. I collected wine at the bus stop before entering the mines to farm fiber. Oh, Danger in the Deep. Looking back, I don't know how on earth I forgot that I accepted the quest and didn't have access to the elevators. I made my way down to floor 15 before going home to sell my goods. I passed out on the farm. Again. Why do I always do this? I gave my husband a gift this morning before visiting my animals. I then went to the quarry to chop trees. After using the mine carts, I was determined to conquer the mines. On floor 24, I- Are you serious? I swear this game taunts me sometimes. Despite that, my luck in the mines was phenomenal today. I made it all the way down to floors 45, 50, and 55 before passing out on floor 57. What a productive mining trip. On day 192, I made truffle oil and sold lava eel roll on my way to the quarry. I knocked down all the trees and then planted the pine cones the trees dropped. Recycling. I went to the mines with a huge goal in mind, reaching the bottom. I made it to floor 90, which was really solid. Maybe the bottom was a bit of a stretch. I went back to the farm to make iron bars and slept. It was time to collect. I grabbed iron, copper, mayonnaise, truffle oil, cheese, ancient fruit, fruit trees, and forage today. Not bad. I sold everything and went to the desert. There I traded for my weekly magic rock candy and went to the dangerous mines for a final stab at this quest. Digging through the last few floors made me nervous. It was quickly approaching 2am. I reached floor 120 just in time. Then I claimed my key gems and hustled home to nap. I collected cheese, truffle oil, mayo, and void mayo. I then went to the railroad to gather oak resin. I crafted 20 kegs. I then chopped trees in the Cindersat forest. I chopped trees in the quarry. I chopped trees in the backwoods. How many trees did I chop today? I then went to bed. I started day 195 by harvesting more cranberries. My last 2,000 of the season. I gathered more oak resin at the railroad and worked to Ginger Island to harvest starfruit. I went to the mines to farm iron ore before entering town. I finally had enough money to buy the jack o lantern recipe and my last rare crow. I went through the Spirit Sea of Maze finding the golden pumpkin before heading home. When I got back to the farm, I crafted more kegs and went to Ginger Island to sleep. I learned the Fiddlehead Risotto recipe from the Queen of Sauce and read my mail. I was sent the recipe for the Deluxe Scarecrow. My final recipe. I sold the cranberries from yesterday before planting starfruit. I bought hundreds of ores from Clint and went to the bus stop to gather starfruit wine. I crafted more kegs and warped to the desert. There I picked up 400 starfruit wine and placed the 88 kegs I made throughout the week. I filled every keg with starfruit and went back to the bus stop. As I continued to fill kegs, more were finished so I collected them along the way. I passed out at the bus stop before I could get home. As the fall wrapped up, I prepared for my final season in the valley.
It was day 197 already. The time seemed to fly by. I went back to the bus stop to finish filling cakes of starfruit before selling the 677 wine from yesterday. I dove into my crafting chest for the last time. I grabbed a torch, pumpkin, fiber, wood, and iridium ore before opening my crafting menu. I crafted a deluxe scarecrow and a jack-o'-lantern earning myself the craft master achievement. Craft one of every item in the entire game. I went to the beach to enjoy my favorite pastime, winter foraging. This time it wasn't for money but for enjoyment. I haven't been to the beach in a while and it was nice to go back and visit. I went back home to collect artisan goods and harvested my greenhouse. I sold everything I had and went to sleep. This was the best money day yet. Over 2.2 million gold earned in just a single night. I could feel how close I was to affording the final building I needed for perfection. I opened my fruit chest, pulled out over 1,000 star fruit, and dumped them into the shipping bin. Most people decorate during winter, and I wanted to try my hand at it. I spent the last seven seasons grinding from dawn till dusk. It was time to truly make the valley a better place. I stopped by Pierre's store to buy a catalog and went to Robin's shop to purchase a workbench, mini fridge, TV, and furniture catalog. I went back to my farmhouse. Inside, I placed down my catalogs to begin renovations. I changed the wallpaper and flooring in the bedroom and kitchen. I then added windows and floor dividers for depth. I moved all my finished cooking items to the mini fridges. I then added an end table with a bonsai on top. Just because it was winter doesn't mean I couldn't have some greenery. I moved my vending machine and a trash can into the kitchen and added some lighting. I then went to bed. I woke up and checked my funds. I had over 10 million gold in hand. I headed straight to the only man in the valley who could help me perfect my farm, Rasmodius himself. I purchased the golden clock. 10 million sure is a lot to tell the time. I then rearranged some of my buildings and went to the carpenter store. I asked Robin to add rooms to my house and bought a shed. Back on the farm I turned quartz into refined quartz using my furnaces. I then crafted crystal flooring to place around my obelisks. I also crafted other types of pathing to start working on a mosaic style walking path. I then headed to bed with a golden feeling in my heart. Day 200 was going to be a big day. I placed sprinklers before beginning to lay down more paths. I wasn't a fan of that design so I tore everything down. I experimented with different sprinkler layouts and placed and removed pathing until I checked the time. It was already 1am. Some days in Stardew Valley you don't get done what you wanted to. Everybody has unproductive days sometimes. Today was a really simple day. I placed pathing around my sprinklers until I was happy with the design. Then I slept. Decorating is harder than I thought it would be. My lava eels requested an iridium bar today. I gave them what they asked for before placing pathing around the pond. I added an outline to an area I was going to use later before passing out on my way back to bed. I learned the poppy seed muffin recipe today on the TV before going to the kitchen to make it. I crafted crystallariums and lightning rods and added them along with seed makers to my workshop area. I filled the crystallariums with jade and harvested wine at the bus stop in the desert. I passed out before I could sleep. I sold all the wine I collected yesterday as soon as I woke up. I harvested crops in my greenhouse and placed them in the shipping bin on my way to Cindersat Forest. It was the festival of ice. I was so busy last year I forgot to attend. During the fishing competition I caught 5 fish and 1. I earned a sailor's cap and fishing gear before going to my bed adding 2 million gold to my funds. I collected jade from my crystallariums and smelted gold in my furnaces before heading to the desert. I added magic rock candy and popped a triple shot espresso before diving into skull caverns. Today was a productive day in the mines. I found 2 auto petters, 4 prismatic shards and left on floor 130 to head to sleep. Good morning Sebastian. Happy birthday. Now that I've done my chores it's time to decorate. I added a table to the kitchen. Sebastian and I have been using the TV as our table for the last few months. I changed the entryway flooring for some rustic vibes. This wallpaper could use a change too. I put a few things on my wall to liven up the place. I hung up the Highway 89 painting, a miner's pickaxe, and a calendar. I then placed a telephone, dresser, and a china cabinet in my dining room. Since it's kinda chilly outside, why not add a stone fireplace to keep us warm? I laid out a large red rug and set up a dining table with velvet chairs to go with it. Something was off. For some reason, it kind of feels stuffy in here. Maybe I should add some more windows. I added a log panel to my walls and a lamp to bring some light in the room. Sebastian isn't a fan of natural light, so this was perfect. I replaced the poppy seed muffin and truffle oil I had on tables with pumpkin soup and sashimi. I hope you're okay with your favorite foods going stale, Sebastian. I went to buy a return scepter from Krobus, then made my way to buy the Jojo Mart movie theater. Back to decorating. I changed the wallpaper in car wash's room. I hung up some more paintings and windows. I placed a stool, armchair, and a carpet as well. I hope he likes it. Then it was time to add some stuff for me. I put a bookcase in my study next to my Junimo cart machine. I also changed the wallpaper before going to bed. Overnight the Jojo Mart movie theater was built. I started day 208 by changing the study flooring. 
I added a sewing machine and a chair as well. The house still felt kind of cold, so I added another fireplace to really warm it up. I brightened up the place with some more lights, then laid out a rug and carpet. I bought Hubby and myself the new modern double bed. Sebastian has been putting up with my intense decorating lately. I'll make him a gaming setup to distract him from the constant house renovations. This isn't going to end anytime soon, so good luck, Sebby. Hope you like your computer. I placed a plasma TV and couch. In case Sebastian needs a break from his computer, he has somewhere to watch TV. I added end tables next to our bed and moved on to the aquarium room. I changed the wallpaper and flooring to fit my underwater theme. I added some windows and anchors and added three deluxe fish tanks before passing out. I guess being in that room really lured me to sleep. I woke up feeling refreshed and ready to continue decorating. I added an industrial pipe to my aquarium room along with some rugs. I moved my fishing chest into the room before tackling the next area. The cellar. The flooring here is a mess. I need to patch all these holes. I added more casks and moved my crafting mementos downstairs, then headed to bed. Today's your lucky day, Sebastian. No more stale sashimi in the kitchen. Instead, it'll be in the dining room. What's going to be on the kitchen table, you might ask? A void egg. Heading to the bus stop, I did the unthinkable, removing all my kegs there. Then I collected starfruit wine at the tunnel and sold them. I warped to the desert to place the kegs I removed and ended up passing out while filling them. Well, that's what I get for destroying my factory. This morning, I went straight to the bus stop and began placing paths. I added some lanterns for light and two benches for people to sit on while waiting for the bus. I took a small break and bought two movie theater tickets. After that, I finished my day by chopping trees in town and at the quarry. I headed outside first thing in the morning to place paths on my farm. I moved my furnaces and crafted nine chests to place in the shed. I spent the day organizing the mess that I accumulated this year before sleeping. I wanted to go watch a movie, but with who? I should take the dwarf. I bet they haven't seen this one before. After giving the dwarf a ticket, I met them at the movie theater to watch the miracle at Cold Star Ranch. That was a nice movie. The dwarf seemed to have enjoyed the flashing lights as well. I completed my day by fishing in the night market submarine. I organized my chest this morning and went to check my mail. I wonder who will be the person I'm gifting this year at the Feast of Winter Star. I hope it's not Lewis again. Jody? Only seems fair. I wonder if she told Lewis that I forgot her birthday approximately 147 days ago. I continued to organize my chest and place my rare crows on the farm before calling it a night. I woke up this morning and headed straight to Robin's. I felt like the house needs a change of color. I asked her to paint the buildings gray, the roof black, and the trim teal. While I'm here, I might as well help out Pam and Penny by getting them a house upgrade. Thanks for all those bus rides, Pam. I crafted and planted winter and fiber seeds before hitting the hay. Today was going to be such a productive day. I can just feel it. I want to get so much done. I headed to Ginger Island to start my morning. I prepared the farm for crops. Then I planted starfruit. Oh boy, that took all day and now it's time for bed. I turned on the TV to the Queen of Sauce and she taught me how to make bruschetta. That seems easy enough to make. I bet I can cook it myself. I headed out to place grass starters and hardwood fences for my animals. Now that I'm done with that, I decided to give the townspeople items they've been asking for. I gave the wizard an iridium bar, Willie a link cod, Gus a coconut and lobster, Emily an apricot, Evelyn a leek, and Robin hardwood. I then ended my night feeling like a hero. I entered town and was greeted by Pam and Penny gushing over their new home. Robin did a great job making this for them. Though I remained anonymous, I could tell how grateful they were for their new upgraded home. I gave Lewis the truffle oil he asked for officially completing all the quests. I then entered Pam's new house to take a look. It was a mess, so Penny and I cleaned up before eating the worst vegetable medley I've ever tasted in my life. Uh, it's, it's delicious, Penny. I headed up to the carpenter's store to buy a slime hutch for Robin to build. I finished off my night in the mines. I went straight back to the mines first thing in the morning to farm for fiber. I crafted a place fiber seeds before going to bed. Dang, the day really goes by fast when I'm in the mines. Marlin greeted me this morning to show me my slime hutch. Thanks, Marlin. I hope I don't lose my eye. I went to check out my new hutch. Inside, I placed slime incubators, iridium sprinklers, a wicked statue, fences, and a slime press. I then decorated the hutch with some flooring. I made my way to the Adventurer's Guild to receive a slime charmer ring from Gil and placed it in a chest in the slime hutch. I added pathing outside of the hutch in the backwoods. I put two mini obelisks, one on my doorstep and another outside of my shed to make it easier to access. Why walk when I could just teleport? Then I went to sleep. It was time for the Feast of Winter Star. I quickly grabbed Jody's present and headed to the festival. I handed Jody her eggplant parmesan. Consider it a late birthday present. I wonder who my secret gifter is this year. George! Please give me the tea set. Oh, it's just beer. I guess that's one way to celebrate the seasons. Now that the Feast of Winter Star is over, I can really start decorating and making the town look nice. I placed pathing in town, in the mountains, at the railroad, and around Linus's campfire. Then I went to bed. Did I really just spend all day placing paths? 
All of my slimes hatched this morning. What should I do to celebrate? Oh, I know. I went to the desert to place paths and went to the tunnel to place more paths. I have a problem. After my path fixation, I headed to Ginger Island to complete my day by enchanting tools at the forge. I added swift to my hoe, pickaxe, and axe, auto hook to my fishing rod, and bottomless to my watering can. Then I ended my night. Finally, the day I've been waiting for. Day 224. I turned on the Queen of Sauce for the final time and learned how to cook shrimp cocktail. The very last recipe. The final thing I needed to complete perfection. I went to the stove and cooked my last dish of the year. I ended my day at 8.20 a.m. because I earned it after all those late nights. Day 225 started with an evaluation from Grandpa. He was so proud of everything we've accomplished on Perfection Farm. I say we in this instance because I didn't do it alone. From meeting Robin and Lewis on day one to falling in love with Sebastian, the warmness of Stardew Valley really started to set in. This is why I play. Yes, it's a fun game, but it also has one of the most incredible stories in any game I've ever been able to experience. From the hundreds of unique dialogue to dozens of cutscenes, this game is everything I've ever dreamed of in a single playthrough. And don't get me started on the music and sounds this game has. I'm one to be fascinated by being able to listen to how complex the tracks are in the Stardew Valley soundtrack. Editing this video and making my dream to create a movie into reality really hits close to home. Over 100 hours of gameplay, days of scripting and planning, and countless long nights, the vision of perfection was no longer a vision but my future. I got four candles on the shrine and went to claim my... Excuse me, Grandpa. I said I went to claim my statue of perfection and headed to the top of the mountain. At the summit, there was my rock through it all. Sebastian. He told me the world wasn't such a dark place after all. He was right. The world is beautiful and I'm glad I'm in it with all of you. On that note, roll the credits. Our journey has finally come to an end. But this isn't the end of Perfection Farm. If I ever want to pick up the save again, I know Sebastian and everybody else in the town will be waiting for me. There's only one thing left for me to say. I'll see you in the next one.